evening, everybody. Tonight it's game six, the quarterfinal round between the Flyers and the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm Don Earl, along with guest analyst Terry Crisp and Gene Hart, as uh, the Flyers hope to end the hopes of the Leafs in this quarterfinal round. They lead in the series three games to two, and Terry, all the talk around Toronto is Mike Palmatier's injury, which has put him out for the playoffs, and from a player, what would be going through the minds of the Leafs, and what effect could the change in goaltending to Wayne Thomas have in this pivotal game? You've got to know, Don, at the Leafs are hoping that uh, Wayne Thomas will give them the much-needed injection in the arm, get a little momentum for them going to keep them alive. On the other side of the fence, you know that our fellas are hoping that we can get an early goal on him, shake him up a little bit, let him know he's in the game. Got the good vibes tonight. You come in and took your secret route. Gene, give me the cigar bit, and I got the ulcers and butterflies going. Cigar bit. I blow smoke in his face. The big matchup tonight, can Lonsbury and Clark again neutralize Sittler and McDonald, leaving Dave Williams overmatched on that far wing with Reggie Leach. And I think that's something that Red Kelly is going to try to get away from tonight. And we'll have the opening face-off of Pivotal Game 6 here from Maple Leaf Gardens after we pause for this. Back here at Maple Leaf Gardens, we'd like to advise you that Don Earl and I have been selected and trade by the station in the Philadelphia Flyers. The Leaf fans, Perry, uh, well, we're going to remind everybody back home that if the Flyers play home at the Spectrum Sunday, regardless of the opponent, the game will be at 8 o'clock, and you will hear it on WCAU Radio and see it as well on WTAF TV Channel 29. If the Flyers play home Sunday, 8 o'clock game, regardless of the opponent, and you'll see it in Philadelphia on Channel 29 and hear it on WCAU. Terry, despite the gloom here in Toronto, the lead fans of this place usually very reserved, gave their team, I think, uh, uh, the ovation uh, necessary for a club with a back against the wall to show them that, look, we're usually quiet, but we still think you've got a chance to win this thing. A well-deserved one they got coming back home, Gene. They've got nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to hang their heads. They walked in, you know what they've done in the first two games in our building. Back here, two cliffhangers that we pulled out, back into our building again. A very credible game, 2 nothing on Reggie Leach's two goals, so I think that the fans are still behind them here, which they well should be. Wayne Thomas, he'll be 30 this coming October, acquired two years ago from the Montreal Canadiens after sitting out the 74-75 season through no choice except that of Scotty Bowman who didn't play him. And then he was picked up in a key draft trade by the Canadians here uh, for Doug Jarvis, who was the Leafs' number one pick. Jarvis to go on to be a superlative 20-goal scorer and checker for Canadians, while Thomas had a good year last year, but started off dismally this season, never got on track, and it was Paul Matier who came to the rescue on the charging white horse, which stumbled in Philadelphia on Tuesday night, putting the charge back on the former University of Wisconsin, six foot two, 195 pound goaltender, who first started his pro career in 1970-71 with the Montreal Voyageur of the American Hockey League. Three years there, a partial season or two with Canadians, and then that last full season, he played 22 minutes of the first game against the Flyers and went on to win that one three to two as Pal Matier was injured and he gave up one goal, a late third period power play goal from Bob Daly. Uh, in the Pittsburgh playoff series, he was in game one, won by Toronto four to two, was bombed out in the next one six to four and that's when Pal Matier came in to clinch the Pittsburgh series and be the key player in the first five of this one. The referee is Dave Newell, the linesman, Ron Finn and Neil Armstrong, the same two linesmen as in Philadelphia on Tuesday. The backup referee tonight is Brian Lewis. Again, the Flyers realize that you cannot count short the uh, Toronto. They have a, an unbounding confidence against Philadelphia, but this year in this building, they have been less than successful, Terry. In the five, four games played here, two in the playoff, two in the regular season, the Flyers tied 5-5, one seven five four three in overtime and six five in overtime and so they've outscored the Leafs 22 18 in four games that's ten goals a game Flyers averaging better than five per and the Leafs know they're going to have to cut that down if they hope to win tonight they keep saying Gene that they're bound to win at home ice that uh, the law of average is going to catch up with them they got to make a win but as Scotty Bowman coach of Montreal Canadiens says there's no such thing as the law of average you make your own laws and right now the Philadelphia Flyers are firm believers in that all right, they're standing here, sellout crowd, 16,485 for the playing of the Canadian National Anthem.
people have asked us the song played when the leaves come on. Let's see if I get my musicology. That was called the Maple Leaf Forever, and at one time it was the Canadian National Anthem, later replaced by O Canada. The one just played now was O Canada, Gene. That was not the Maple Leaf Forever. No, but I mean when they come on the ice. All right, you're true enough again. There you are, you're true enough for you for tonight. All right, Thomas Wright, Stevenson left. Flyers could clinch it tonight for the opening period. Let's go Flyers and let's go Don Earl. Thank you, Gene. It's going to be the Flyers defending the goal to our left. Dave Newell signaling jo uh, goal judges at both ends of the ice. It's going to be Bobby Clark between Lonsbury left, Leach right against the Sittler line intact, Williams left, and McDonald right. All set to go for the faceoff to start game six of this quarterfinal round. On the faceoff, Leach control at his own line is Boya Salmi. Angles it off the left wing boards, goes the length of the ice, and it's icing immediately off the bat against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Terry, one statistic I like to throw at you. The Flyers have averaged 37 shots a game as Coach Red Kelly looks on from the far side, and the Leafs 27, and you give a club like Philadelphia 36 per game, and you're just not going to win. With the amount of uh, goal scorers we have, Gene, and the amount of firepower, as Freddie said, if they keep giving you the puck, eventually they're going to put it in your own net. Okay, the face-off now deep in the Toronto zone to the left of Wayne Thomas. On the face-off, Ron Finn drops it off. Daly gets a drive, kicked out by Thomas to the far wing and cleared back to the fly zone by McDonald. It'll be Bob Daly chasing it down. Scoots behind his own net, quickly up to Leach, directs it to center ice, but right on the stick of Turnbull. Sittler goes for it, comes back in the fly zone to Daly, who crosses left to Jim Watson, up to center ice for... Ross Lonsbury. Lonsbury stopped at the Toronto line. And we have an offside call against the Flyers. Good check there. And the puck came over the blue line in the center ice and then trickled back in as Fred Shiro looks on just to the right of Len Red Kelly. Talking to Freddie today, and I said, are you changing your strategy, Freddie? He looks at me and gives you his, his best answer. Why? Gordy McRae just celebrated his birthday last week as a backup goaltender in the absence of Palmateer. Flyers now going with McLeese along with Dornhofer and Bill Barber. Puck lifted the length of the ice by Bladen, but sliding out to the left to retrieve it is Wayne Thomas. Thompson quickly around to McKinney. McKinney starts out on the right wing. Here's Thompson taking the feed. Drives from the blue line. Wide of Stevenson, who takes the carom off the backboards and taps it back to the backboards for Joe Watson. McLeese took his eye off the puck and fan in his clearing attempt. Now it's played up the right wing for Gary Dornhofer. Dorney goes left side. McLeish taps it behind Carlisle. Off angle shot stopped at the side of the post by Thomas. Back to Joe Watson. Glove save. Almost just played by Thomas. And here comes Thompson to McKinney. And he's the center right. McKinney breaks with Pellick. Offside is way back. A drive on McKinney. It's kicked out by Stevenson. Centering pass intercepted by Barber. Ahead to Dornhofer. He's across the Toronto line. Takes the drive. Rebound to Barber. Kick save. Two quick ones by Thomas and Goodwin. Barber keeps the puck in the zone. Turns on the forehand. Kick, the drive again is deflected off the mark by Turnbull who is standing in the slot. Back to the point at the right point. Drives it to the right wing corner. No one there but Ian Turnbull. Turnbull controls. Lead pass for Bob Neely. He's at center ice. Check from behind by Kindrichuk. Puck rolls wide of Stevenson. He clears out. And delay offside is finally called against Toronto. We've got 17.59 to go in the first period. There's no score. Toronto going with Don Ashby between Neely and Boutet. Flyers counter with the Kindrichuk line. Seleski on the right side, Bridgman on the left side. A drive from center ice by Salming. Cut down by DuPont. Quickly up to Kindrichuk, who keeps it on its way to the Leafs backboard. Thomas. Feeds up his left wing, gets by Neely, and also gets by LaPointe, but backing him up is Moose DuPont. DuPont challenged by Ashby, feeds across in the left wing for Bridgman, intercepted by Salming. Salming closing, can't get a shot off, as LaPointe took the man and not the puck, as Selesky tried to move out, and it's driven back behind the Flyers' net. Kindrichuk goes to the left wing, up to Bridgman. Bridgman can't clear it out. Boutet jams it right back to the backboard behind the Flyers' net. DuPont starts out on the right. Lead pass gets by everyone. This will be icing against the Flyers. Salming touches up. Face off at the Flyers' end. Uh, 
Gloria sounding from Karuna Slayton. Well, right now, Terry, off of play in this series, has convinced me that I might have guessed wrong in saying Larry Robinson, a runaway choice for the Norris Trophy. You have to feel that Salming can do many more things, and he's doing it with a far less talented team. It couldn't go very far wrong, Gene, choosing either Borgia Salming or Larry Robinson. Pretty sure right now claims that Borgia Salming is the best defenseman in the league. That international series starting in Vienna today, Canada defeated the United States 4-1. Goals by Esposito, Paymont, Cronobo, and LaRouche. Face off to the right of Stevenson, controlled by the Flyers. Daly scoots behind his own net, starts out on the left wing. Leads. Lonsbury down the left side, lifts it to the Toronto backboard. Thomas handles the carom, leaves it for Randy Carlisle, who's broken up Clark with Lonsbury behind the net. Feeds out front. Leaves hits the goal post. Puck cleared up to Williams, but not out. Here's Daly lifting it to the right wing corner for Clark. Clark checked before he can feed out of the corner. In to help out is Lonsbury. He's bumped back to Daly. Daly's drive hits the crossbar. A post shot and now a crossbar shot. Puck behind the lace. That's Clark. Tried to go back to the corner. Now it's picked up by Tiger Williams. And here come the lead. Across to Darrell Sittler. He drives from the blue line. Partially. And partially blocked. But quickly the Flyers intercept. Lonsbury. Check after he drives it to the Toronto backboard. McDonald caught a piece of him as the Flyers change in the go. Quickly a lead pass to Trimble at center right. Trimble across the Flyers line, cuts inside. Can't get the shot away as he's checked to the corner by Joe Watson. Out of the corner with the puck comes Rick McLeish. McLeish to center right. Threads his way across the line, drops it off for Layton. Can't get the shot off and the puck goes harmlessly to the Toronto left wing corner. Turnbull crosses for Tiger Williams. Salming drives the length of the ice. This will be icing against the Leafs. We have 15.42 left in first period play. There's still no score. Back here in the gardens right now, Reggie leads just two good chances on tipping. One a good shot that he bounced off the post. Dear Bob Daly shoots one right there, comes off. Reggie leads, you can see a stick coming in. Had Thomas moving to the far side of the net, just up and off the crossbar. And just before that, Reggie let a good slot, wrist shot from the slot that dinged off the post also, Don. Leach, uh, right now, has scored three consecutive goals for the Flyers. The overtime goal on Sunday night and a pair in the 2-0 shutout on Tuesday night. Puck at center ice, Bladen trying to send Dornhofer through. Gets by him. Turnbull in his own zone, crosses right side to Selman, quickly to center right. Earl Thompson drives from the blue line, but the shot taken away by Tom Blade. Driven behind the Flyers, that McKinney in the right wing corner. Goes to the left wing corner where it's picked up by Ferguson. Back behind the net for Thompson. He's upended by McLeish, goes back to the right wing corner. No leaf is there. Joe Watson trying to move it out. He's broken up by Ferguson. Lifts it to the Flyers backboard again. Thompson. Gives it away to Ferguson inadvertently. Now it's Thompson checked by Dornhofer along the near side, but it's moved to center ice by McLeish. Ahead for Barber. Eludes him. It'll be icing against the Flyers. Flyer fans, a 10th anniversary edition of the yearbook available with that great first year nostalgia edition when the Flyers won their first Clarence uh, Campbell Conference. If you look at a Stanley Cup ring here that's available to you, that yearbook for $2 at the Spectrum or $2.50 via mail to Champion Publications, Post Office Box 2429. Philadelphia, the zip 19147 is here. They showed the ring worn by Flyers head trainer, Jim McKenzie. Face off back at the Flyers zone to the right of Stevenson. Ashby against Kimberchuk Flyers control. La point quickly around the far wing, gets by everyone, and this again will be icing, or will they wave it off? It's waved off. Carlisle spins away from a Kelly check behind the Toronto net. Boutet tied up by Kindrachuk as they dig for it. Finally, a whistle by Dave Newell. It'll be dropped off when play resumes in the circle to the right of Wayne Thomas. Pat Boutet, a second year. He's a 25-year-old from Windsor, Ontario. 10 goals, 22 assists last year. And Bob Kelly with his 22 goals this year has yet to pick up a playoff point. The Hound enjoys playing in this building, and he can sure get our team excited when we need him going, so maybe he'll get us going in the early going of this game. Kendra Chuck and Ashby, quick whistle, face-off circle violation. We'll try it again. Another uh, rather surprising statistic, DuPont and Dornhopper nearly a playoff point thus far. All set to go to the right of Thomas in the De Toronto zone. Puck goes to the backboard. Kendra Chuck trying to dig it loose, drops it back on the far wing, but it's picked off by Boutet. Clear to center ice. LaPointe has to spin away. 
Gives it off to Holmgren, who lifts the backhand, a back down into the right wing corner, skips behind the Toronto net. Kelly goes for it, but Carlisle starts out. He spun around by Holmgren. Kelly's still in there and gets loose. Carlisle ahead for Boutet, right wing. Rise from the red line, long range on Stevenson. Steers it behind the net for LaPointe, quickly around to Kelly. Carms right out to LaPointe, and he's to center ice. Right wing pass, Holmgren. Inside the Toronto zone, has no shot. Lets it to the backboard. Carms out to the point. DuPont gets a drive. Cut down by Pelican, lifted out of the zone in the far away. Kindrichuk across the way, lifts up to Kelly. Kelly gets away from his antagonizer. That's Boutet. But Ashby picks off a pass and dress, drives it back into the Flyers' backboard. Behind the net, LaPointe winds it up to Lonsbury on the left wing. He leads Kindrichuk to center ice on the left, across the Toronto zone. Kindrichuk stops, wheels away from Sittler, goes to the left wing corner, but Salming intercepts, up to Boutet. And here come the Leafs on the right wing at center. Salming, trying to penetrate, gets across the line. His drive hit either the goaltender stick or the post. It's cleared immediately back to the Toronto zone by Clark. And this will be icing against the Flyers. 13-11 left in first period play. No score. No pressure apparently on either club as they're skating full out. And crisp action after 6.49. We have no score. Faceoff will be to the right of Stevenson as the Flyers go with Clark. Leach and Lonsbury on the faceoff. Picked up by Clark. Clark slammed down on the blind side. Checked by Ladd and McDonald. He gets back up. Jim Watson with a loose puck. Lifts it out of the zone. Back toward the Toronto line. Clark goes for it. Lifted out of play off the stick of Ian Turnbull. Faceoff will be just inside. Excuse the me, inside the Toronto blue line. The age old philosophy. He who hesitates gets zonked by Lanny McDonald. Lanny McDonald come a long ways across the ice, right from his far right wing all the way across to deck Clarkie. But as per usual, Clarkie bounced back up, right back into play, and down ice again with another full head of steam. So the, the effect of that check didn't deter him at all. He's right back in the game. All right, now we see Len Kelly is trying to get McDonald and Sickler away from Lonsbury and Clark. Now Kelly is going to have to come back, and Bob, uh, Bobby or Billy Barber goes into the box on the far side. Now we're getting our first bit of linesmanship here. We have 7.03 gone scoreless first period. Okay, it's going to be Ferguson against Clark. Daly keeps the puck in play, and now it comes to center ice. Kelly crosses to the right side. Holmgren across the line. Fans as he tries to dump it in deep. Now picked up by Turnbull to Clark. Goes left side. Kelly over for it. Spins around, rolls it in. Holmgren takes it to the left wing corner. Back to Kelly. Let's it go for the left point man. Jimmy Watson's drive blocked and deflected back to center ice by Ferguson. Puck still in play. Jimmy Watson tripped up. Gets inside the line. Can't get a shot off. Puck cleared out to Thompson by McKinney. Thompson lifts it down the left wing board. Skips behind the net where Stevenson slows it down. Gives it up to Kelly. Poke checked away from him by McKinney. Jim Watson has Ferguson tied up. Jim Watson trying to get away from Ferguson. Held up. Ahead for Clark too far. Picked up by Kelly. All in the left wing in the flyer zone. Crosses right side to Daly. Daly trying to send Dorn Hopper through, and he's tied up by Salming. Puck goes loose to the Toronto backboard as Salming starts out. And now Dorn Hopper is using the same tactics as Salming slashes Dorn Hopper, and the puck is back at the flyer zone. Joe Watson up the left wing. Lets it off the stick of Turnbull to the right wing corner in the Toronto zone. McLeish stays stride for stride with Errol Thompson. He goes down. Salming with the puck. Salming. Quickly out to Turnbull on the left side. He's at center. Sends Sittler down the right lane. Puck goes behind the Flyers net. Watson checks Sittler off the puck. And it's touched up, and we have an icing called against Toronto. Uh, Terry Crisp, why, when a player skates around the net, does he give a man leeway between the puck carry and the net to come alongside him instead of hugging tight to the net and screening that chaser as that time uh, uh, Kelly chased and almost had to play on the puck? It'll depend on the player. If you watch Bobby Clark when he goes behind the net with the puck, he'll cut in close to the net and give you no advantage whatsoever to get to the inside of him. A lot of times it'll depend on the head of steam you have too, Gene. If you're going too fast, it's tough sometimes to cut the corner sharp. But most of the players will try and keep in close to the net so they can't get you. I'm surprised Wayne Stevenson, the professor right there, the guardian de boo of our nets for tonight. I'm surprised uh, more players don't zonk into the net. You ever watch Helen Kelly go running across the back of it a few times? <laughs> Okay, face off to the left of Thomas. Clark against Sittler. 
Lonsbury and leads the forwards on either side of Clark. Toronto controls. It's Pellick behind his own net. Starts out on the right wing. Clark chases him to center ice. Thompson slows Pellick down, but the puck goes all the way in on Stevenson. Steers it behind the net to the Flyers' left wing, and Lonsbury picks it up in full swing. He's at center ice. Deals it off to Clark. Clark off the skate of Leach. Puck stopped at the Toronto line as Sittler comes back. He's across the Flyers' line. Can't get a shot off. Boutet centers it, but no one there. In to help out is Tiger Williams. Broken up. And now it's Clark at center ice. He's broken up by Pellick. Pellick taken down from behind as Clark ties him up. Now across the Flyers' line on the left. Boutet's stride. Locked off by Blade. Clark back on the carom. He's out to center ice. Chris crosses with Bridgman. Clark across the Toronto line. As Leach cutting for the net, but can't get the pass away. And here comes Pellick. And we have a penalty coming up, and it's a Toronto call. I think Settler knew that time he caught Clarkie with the elbow. And so for the first time in the series, the Flyers get a power play. 10-39 remaining first period, no score. It's the elbow penalty on Clarkie just inside the blue line. He tries to get him. Clarkie just gets enough out of the way that Settler only gets a piece of him. you got to know that Red Kelly is sending out McDonald and Settler. They know that Clarkie's the backbone to our offense when he's out there. They want to tire him out. They want to take as much out of him as possible. So Lanny McDonald corked him a good one earlier. Said he's taking a couple runs at him. So we'll watch out throughout tonight if they keep chasing Clarkie around. On the faceoff in the Toronto zone. McLeish on the left wing boys. Double team gets the pass off to Lonsbury. Tries to hit Dornhofer wide open on the right side. Dornhofer takes Salming to the left wing corner boys. And we get a whistle from referee Dave No Play will be resumed as the faceoff will be to the right of Thomas. General tendency is here to try to get it to Rick McLeish because he makes things happen. Ricky's got that wrist shot, which we're all know he's quite capable of. Plus, he's got a good slap shot. So, as Fred Shiro says to Mike Nicklock, get that puck to Rick McLeish on the power play. Ferguson against McLeish on the draw. The linesman is Ron Finn. Toronto controls. Salming checked by Lonsbury. Ferguson trying to clear out. Kicks it. Kept in by Barber. Now it's driven into the left wing corner where Lonsbury gives it off to Dornhofer. Still in the left wing corner. Dorney looks for the open man. Across to Daly, short side wide. Karen's behind the net to Dornhofer, back in that left wing corner. Dornhofer holds as Lonsbury comes back in the zone. Dorney goes into the corner for Lonsbury, who vacates. Comes back to McLeish. Kick save from a short angle by Thomas. Daly to Dornhofer. He's tied up by Turnbull. This is in the right wing corner. Lonsbury in there, waiting for the puck to come loose. Turnbull has got to play it. And Dornhofer takes it away. Dornhofer tries to back pass. He's tied up. Gets loose again. Gets it off to Lonsbury. He's got daily breaking. Can't get the shot away. And now it's back behind the net again. Goes to the right wing corner and slid. Finally by Errol Thompson the length of the ice. 45 seconds left on Simpler's penalty. We're going to get a hold down here, Don, on Philadelphia against Turnbull with 924 remaining in the first period. No score. Gary on the playoff series is 21st and 22nd minute for holding Turnbull trying to come out of the Leafs defensive left wing corner killing the power play 45 seconds remaining on the Settler penalty so they'll play five aside for that duration and then the Leafs no further penalties withstanding will get a power play of their own for 75 seconds you got to figure Gene that that's what you call an even up call for them no way that Dorney was doing anything but checking close in staying close to the man the referee Dave Newell decided he was holding in too close and gives Dorney two. Face off to the right of Stevenson. Don Ashby against Oris Kindrachuk. Ashby gets it back to Pellick at the left point. Pellick looks, drives wide of Stevenson. Back to Carlisle at the right point. He keeps the puck in the zone for Ashby who drives. In on Stevenson. Almost changes direction off the stick of Bob Neely. Now it's on the flyers left wing. Jim Watson ahead for Seleski. Can't control it. Sunrise it's Carlisle driving it back in again. Jimmy Watson clears back to center. Carlisle challenged. Picked up now on the left wing by Seleski as the Flyers break. Seleski across the line has to hold up as Jimmy Watson had penetrated. Seleski now ragging the puck at center ice. Crosses on the left to Jim Watson, all at center ice. Drives it inside the zone. Tried to click with Seleski on a crisscross. And now Sittler is back. The Leafs are on the power play. Puck deep in the Toronto zone as Pellick moves it up the left wing for Neely. Crosses right side at center ice. McDonald's and Sittler across the line. His shot is blocked by DuPont. Swept to the corner, but Sittler intercepts. Goes behind the net to the far corner. Jimmy Watson can't clear out. Selming drives it back in behind the net. Centering pass. Stevenson almost caught outside. Four. Wayne 
made the bad gamble there, not only lost the stick, but a goal. Wayne went out his net behind the net to try and clear that puck. And now we have a new sign man in the Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens also to rival ours. And Turnbull gives the Leafs a 1-0 lead on a power play goal. I mentioned Chef went behind the net to stop it. Dale Sittler would beat him to it, just spun it right out. It goes through a maze of bodies all the way out to Turnbull, who doesn't even stop it, just comes straight in, and it goes all the way shoulder high, and Steph can't get back in time. As you said, Gene, he had lost his stick, was out of the play, and didn't recover in time, so Turnbull lets a shoulder high shot from the blue line all the way in through a maze of bodies to give the Leafs a one nothing lead in this game. Turnbull gets that. Williams and Sittler both picking up assists as the Flyers now forced again to play catch up. The kid line of Boudreaux, Warner, and Evans is now on. Puck at the Flyers' right point as Salming is dumped by Kelly. Kelly to center ice for Paul Holmgren. Cuts to the right wing. Goes outside of Turnbull. Goes to the Toronto right wing corner. Bumped by Boudreaux, but both of them still on their feet. Kelly battles for it. Boudreaux checks. And now here we go. Holmgren against Boudreaux. And that quickly stopped. And now Holmgren knocks the draw again. And these are bad penalties, sir. And the Leafs are going to come up with a power play again. And that's the last thing you want at this juncture. They're all piled up in the corner to the left of Wayne Thomas. And now it's Holmgren and Boudreau, the young tough head and off. They're being held off by Dave Newell and number 28, Ron Finn. The line for Neil Armstrong something Holmgren out and on the perimeter now of the problem. And uh, Brett Kelly over there. Glad this is stirring up. The one thing we wanted to do, Gene, was to maybe stay away from penalties, but Paul and the Hound went in the corner, stirring up a little bit. Boudreau come in, took a run of Paul earlier. Paul come back. You could see him looking over to see who did get him. They're still going hot and heavy down in the corner. Big Paul Holmgren still wants a piece of who's ever in the corner doing the pushing to the least right now. I'm just not too sure who it is. Hound Kelly's in there. Mel no, Bridgman wants a piece of it. That's Evans, and I think everybody's going to go now. Let's see. Warner's 25, with row 19, and Evans 16. Al Ballard, along with Jim Gregory and King Clancy. And we've got a home run, I think, is gone. Long run's gone. Neil Armstrong is right there is where he comes in and tries to get him. Paul sees it, takes a look. Turnbull comes in and hits him. The Hound just jolts Turnbull. I think Here's where Paul gives him a little bit of an elbow right coming through there, and he'd already had two calls. Gives him a cross-check across the head right there, and down he goes. Paul is heading for the gate, so I'm not sure what. Paul gives him a little tap right there with his left hand as he's coming, coming up, so. We have 7.41 remaining in the first period. Toronto one, Flyers nothing. Here at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, the Leafs have just scored a power play at 11.43. Turnbull is fourth of the playoffs from Sittler and Williams. And Paul Holmgren now has picked up a game misconduct along with whatever else transpired prior to his set two with young Paul Boudreau, with Bobby Clark uh, leaning over the dashers on the far side with his former line mate Bob Kelly. And now let's see what else is going to come out of all this. Nothing else? Nothing else is on the board. Over at our bench right now, there's referee Dave Newell, who has just assessed a game misconduct to Paul up. Holmgren, which will give now him the rest, the rest of the night. Paul also picks up a five-minute major. That's what we see up on the board. That's the one thing we want to stay away from. Freddie Shiro right now looking over the situation. See, there's Professor Wayne Stevenson down there. Captain Bobby Clark looking on. You can bet he's not very happy with referee Dave Newell either. So, do you think that five for fighting for Paul? and a game misconduct. So Paul is gone for the night. Well, that's one of those rare times, Terry, where you'll see a fighting call with no retaliatory penalty on the other side. So now the Flyers, who have popped up nine power play goals and 27 opportunities to the Leafs, that's one every three. And now the Leafs get their five-minute power play. And here's uh, where the Flyers, who were blown out by power plays in the first three games, are really going to have to steal. And I mean with a double E and not an EA. Gene, you know that power plays in themselves will just kill you. And this whole series, you've mentioned numerous times. And even the fact that you kill off the five minutes touch wood that we do, it tires out a lot of your hockey players. You're taking a lot of steam out of them in the early going in this game. So 
I said numerous times we want to try and stay away from them but right now we're into a five minute one so hopefully our fellows will get their legs under them kill it off and we'll go from there but the Leafs have had a potent power play this whole series against us now, I can't recall ever uh, seeing in, in recent memory at least a five minute fighting as Gene pointed out with uh, no one else uh, that he fought with plus a game misconduct with no penalty minutes against Toronto whatsoever. Leafs on a five minute power play through Sunrise comes Sittler right wing pass across the Flyers line McDonald drives it around behind the Flyers net to the near side the Toronto left wing Turnbull to the left wing corner for Sittler centering pass splits between the defense all the way back to the late zone as Salming is on the gallop for it. Fourth checking with the Flyers Seleski quickly pass up to McDonald at his own line slowed down by a poke check thrown by a kid by a kinder Chuck. here comes Salming across the line sends it ahead for Williams broken up by Kendra Chuck it's loose under Kendra Chuck's skate driven to the backboards Jim Watson gets the carom around to Seleski he can't clear it out Williams trying to dig it loose in the Flyers left wing corner centering pass picked off by Jim Watson goes behind the net to the far wing Kendra Chuck can't clear out kept in by McDonald crosses to Sittler it does come to center ice so the Leafs will have to clear Sittler waits for Williams to clear goes to McDonald on the right wing dumps it to the Flyers backboard Daly cuts him off picked off by Dave Williams comes back to Salming at the right point Salming crosses but it comes to center ice as he tried to go left side for Turnbull Flyers change as Clark is on replacing Kindrachuk now it's McDonald from his own blue line to Turnbull at center Turnbull up to Dave Williams it goes the length of the ice it will be icing against Toronto and we're down to 333 left on that five minute power play for the Leafs Tomorrow morning when you get up, turn to WCAU Radio News 1210. 1210 will get you up and keep you up on everything. It's news, sports, weather, traffic, business. It's what you need to know when you need to know it. WCAU Radio News 1210, your total news and information station. Dave Tiger Williams goes off. As we have 333 remaining on the penalty, the major to Paul Holmgren. 614 in the first period, 1-0 Toronto. Flyers have Clark and Lonsbury as penalty killers as the faceoff will be in the circle to the left of the Toronto net. Leafs go with Ashby between McKinney and Boutet. Defensively, and they also have Errol Thompson up there as McKinney drops back to a defensive post. McKinney with a puck behind his own net. Starts out, lead pass to Ashby on the left wing to center. Ashby drives it to the Flyers' right wing corner or tries to, but it caroms off of Joe Watson. Comes near side, gets by McKinney along the boards, and goes the length of the ice. Back behind the lease net. Set up by Wayne Thomas for Errol Thompson. 310 left on the power play for Toronto. Thompson starts out on the left side of his net. Cuts to the middle as he hits center. Lifts it to the Flyers' right wing boards, goes to the backboard. Boutet there first. Checked into the backboards by Joe Watson. Puck loose. Comes out to Thompson. Blocked off by Lonsbury and Clark controls. Lifts it, but hits Neil Armstrong with it. Lonsbury gets it loose across the top Toronto line. Here comes Lonsbury, and he cuts back to center ice as the Flyers now are trying to rag the puck and kill off valuable time. Bladen in his own zone, almost intercepted by Neely. Puck carries it on Stevenson. Back to Bladen. Lifts it over the head of Bruce Woodrow, the length of the ice. Thompson back on it. Lifts it up his left wing boards for McKinney. Quickly crosses on the right side to Warner. Broken up at center ice, and Warner gets it right back. Warner across the Flyers line to Boudreaux on the left wing. Takes the drive. Good save by Stevenson as that one was labeled low far corner. Centering pass out of the right wing corner. Cleared by Bill Barber, the length of the edge. Two minutes left on the power play advantage for the lead. Flyers down, 1 0. Puck comes to center ice. Controlled by DuPont, loses it. Boudreaux is offside, delayed, and it's cleared back to center ice. Salming has it, as it appeared as though they might have had one extra man on the ice. Puck driven to the Flyers' right wing corner. DuPont clears it by Salming, the length of the ice. Wayne Thomas sets it up behind his own net for Turnbull. McLeish now on for the Flyers, along with Gary Dornhofer. Lead pass comes uh, to Darrell Sittler through center ice. Drives it to the Flyers' backboard. Stevenson puts it behind his net for Dornhofer. Takes a heavy bump from Dave Tiger Williams. Turnbull's drive from the left point kicked out. Sittler tied up. Daly gets the puck. Lifts it to center ice and Salming controls. 1-12 left on the advantage for the Leafs. 
Started out to be a five and a power play. Sittler left wing through to Turnbull. Dry block by DuPont and Daly clears it out of the zone. Lanny McDonald back on it at center right. McDonald to Sittler down the left wing. Here he comes. Centering pass taken away by Clark. Clark drives it out. But kept in now by Salme. Through a screen kick save. Stevenson to Turnbull at the left point. His drive wide on the short side. Kept in by Salming at the right point. Down the right wing boards for Sittler. Intercepted by Bridgman. Bridgman holds. Out to center ice. Crisscrosses with Clark. Bridgman from long range. Glove save Thomas. Drops it out for Sittler. And here come the Leafs. Sittler to center ice. Left wing pass. A right wing pass for Salming. Back on the left to Turnbull. Crossing. Stopped by Stevenson. Jim Watson. Can't clear out. Blocked out by Sittler on the far wing. Jim Watson now clears at the length of the ice as we're down to seven seconds left on the advantage for Toronto. From behind the Leafs, that comes Mike Pellet. Crosses to Carlisle on the right. Carlisle across the line on the right wing, stops, rolls it in towards Stevenson, picked off on the slide as Bladen. Moves it to center ice, and we have a whistle stopping play, and I wonder, too many men on the ice? Yeah, and I think it's against Philadelphia. So good happens. The Flyers just kill five minutes and they make a tactical error and pick up another two. And the Flyers obviously, and that was called by Ron Finn. And now they're talking over there. Finn and uh, Dave Newell along with Neil Armstrong and now the call is being made. And they're discussing and Neil Armstrong's trying to explain to Bob Kelly apologetically saying, look, that's that. I just wonder if they're calling he came out of the penalty box too soon, although it appeared well after the time expired. And they're talking to Kelly and uh, Joe Watson, is, or Jimmy Watson, number 20. Fred Shearer looks on. Far side, the Leafs leading one to nothing. They have a five-minute power play just killed. Just killed eight seconds ago. Let's pick it up. An illegal substitution. And I don't know what that is, Don, and I'm going to have to go to my record book. I think you were probably right when you hit it on the head that maybe uh, the uh, penalized player did come out before uh, I think first stoppage. I think what happens, uh, he might not have gotten over to the, uh, close enough to the bench from the penalty box to make the change, and that's what Ron Finn was calling. The man leaving the penalty box, crossing to the far side, the change was not made properly. So that has to be a bench penalty against the team for illegal substitution. And Don, I think in 10 years of doing Flyers hockey, that's the first time I've ever heard that specific call. It well, comes at 17:27. I've never seen it myself either. Face off midway between the Flyers line and center ice. And uh, this will chew up the bulk of what remains in this period. And the Flyers down by a goal, one nothing. Power play goal by Ian Turnbull, his fourth goal of the playoffs from Sittler and Williams. Carlisle from his own zone up to center ice for McKinney. McKinney puts it to the Flyers left wing corner. Stevenson takes the carom. Blocked out by McKinney in the right wing corner. Returns it to the left wing corner behind the net. Kindred Chuck battles for it. Gets it away from Ferguson and cuts straight up the middle. Takes the, the shortest route, the most direct. Kindred Chuck across the lace line but offside on the left wing was Don Selesky. So the play goes a glimmering. With all that the Flyers have, that has become the premier Backup penalty killing unit, Selesky and Oras Kinderchuk, the bird who skates off down the far side, who has two shorthanded goals this year, and uh, Kinderchuk, another of the 11 that the Flyers pumped in during the playoffs. And the Flyers now are going to switch to Clark along with uh, Lonsbury as out comes the big settler line. Barring anything additional, the Flyers will be at full strength in the final 33 seconds of this, the first period of play. Sittler and Clark just outside the Leafs line. Clark gets a skate on it, but Dave Tiger Williams controls. Circles goes left side for Turnbull, still in the Leafs zone. Now at the line, Sittler drops it off for Salming on the right. Stops. Back to Sittler. Broken up by Bob Daly, but immediately picked up by Salming. Caroms off of Daly to Jim Watson, who lifts up the length of the ice. Wayne Thomas sets up Salming. A minute left on the penalty, a minute 33 left in the period. Up to center ice, gets by Sittler to the Flyers' uh, left wing corner. Touched up and will probably have an offside called against the Leafs as it appeared as though Sittler 
touched up first. Yes, and I think the fans initially booed, thinking, no, it wasn't icing because Sittler got there first, but Ron Finn clearly signaled that offside was the situation on uh, Darrell Sittler. 52 seconds remaining. We'd like to point out that Terry Cripps was on his way down now to our broadcast booth at the ground level to discuss the uh, momentum of the play for the Flyers with Reggie Leach. Face off inside the Leafs line as Clark draws against Darrell Sittler. This year's uh, current playoff point leader with 18. On the faceoff, Clark drives it all the way back to his own zone across the way. DuPont tracks it down, lifts it by everyone back to the Leafs zone where Turnbull has it. Turnbull quickly up to center ice, left wing to Williams, goes right side of McDonald, gets by him, and again DuPont clears back to center. 35 seconds left on the Toronto advantage. Salming to Turnbull on the left wing at center, across the Flyers line, drops it off for Williams, picked off by Lansbury, bounces high in the air. Williams gets a piece of it, goes behind the Flyers net, Gets by DuPont up the far wing. Crosses to Turnbull on the left side. The drive deflected by Bob Daly to the far wing. He's limping. DuPont gets a shot at it and clears it to center ice. Turnbull controls. Comes left side for Tiger Williams. Williams had uh, gets by Daly. Closing. Puck goes off his stick. Out front to Sittler who was standing right on the doorstep. No one moving him out. A drive off the left wing as... Uh, Williams loses his stick and Lonsbury on his right wing in the Flyers end skates it to center ice. Flyers back full. Lonsbury lifts it down the left wing boards, goes behind the Toronto net. We're down to the final 15 seconds of period number one. Puck cleared by everyone, but it will not be icing as Joe Watson tracks it down. Comes out of his own zone to center ice. Seven seconds, six, five, and time is running out as we come to the end of period number one. The bell sounding. With the score, Toronto won, the Flyers nothing. Down here in the interview area with our first intermission guest, you could call him a lot of names, Mr. Rifle, Mr. Playoff, Mr. Con Smythe, whatever. Reggie, you seem to dwell on the playoffs when they come around. There's a lot of players that we call them money players in our racket for the simple reason we love you because you're bringing the big checks in playoffs time, but you seem to just go in overdrive when playoffs show up. Yeah, that's, that's true, Terry. You know, it's, uh, I think it's more of a challenge than uh, during the year, and, you know, it's, uh, in the playoffs, you know, you only if you lose four games, you're out. You go home early, and uh, and I think that's one of the biggest things why uh, you know I I'm always hepped up for the playoffs, and uh, I just hope that you know that uh, we can knock off Toronto tonight. Reggie, of all the players I've met or played with, you've got to be one of the coolest. You you never show pressure, excitement, or anything. And many times I've sat with you and looked at you, and you just sort of shake your head and smile. Nothing seems to get you upset. The penalties tonight, we've said it the whole series. You come in, you say, we're taking a lot of penalties. Reggie, how much is that going to take out of our club? Well, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt the, the four guys or the five guys that kill our penalties. You know, they were just out there. They killed uh, seven minutes straight. And, uh, you know, it's going to hurt like guys like Clark, you know, and that. And, uh, and it doesn't, you know, it's like for guys like myself and Hound that don't kill penalties, you know, we're sitting on the bench and we're getting cold again, and that's hurting us too. So we've got to stay away from them. Talk with Gary Ennis when he joined our club, Reggie. You're famous for your slap shot. Your wrist shot is also as dangerous as, as your slap shot goes. Gary said you're the only player he knows of. When he played against you, he said, Reggie Leach has got to be the luckiest shooter I've seen in the league. After he was here for about a week practicing, he says, Reggie Leach has got to be the best shooter. Reggie, you pick your spots. You're not shooting that slap shot blind when you're coming down off that right wing. Not really. You know, my favorite spots are, uh, if I can come in off the right side, you know, it's, it's between the legs or else uh, the far glove side uh, along the ice. You know, it's something like that, if you keep it low enough, he's, there's no way that he's going to move his leg out fast enough. Reggie, you've got the record right now for the most goals in a Stanley Cup series by a player. 19 goals. You set that last year. You're one of the few players I've met, in fact, you're the only second one I know of, that has won the Conn Smythe Trophy and not been on a winning team that won the Stanley Cup. The other one was Glenn Hall. When we were in St. Louis, he won it when Montreal beat us out in four straight. Reggie, what can we look for for the rest of this game from our club? I think uh, you're going to see the, our club playing a little different in the second period. I think we're going to sort of take the game to them because we're one nothing, we're one one goal down now and uh, we'll have to uh, go all out and uh, I hope we can wrap it up tonight. Reggie, back in, join the fellas, get a bit of a breather. Thanks a lot. Go out and get us a tie out there and a win. Thanks for joining us, Reggie. Now back upstairs to the gondola and Gene Hart. Back here at Maple Leaf Gardens in the gondola, thank you, Terry Crisp. One to nothing leaves and the game started off furiously with the Flyers getting a couple of good opportunities early when Reg Leach first on a shot off a draw and then on a deflection off a Bob Daly shot 
hit the post behind uh, backup goaltender Wayne Thomas, who is the story now for the Leafs. Nothing happened statistically till Daryl Sittler went off about nine and a half minutes through the period for elbowing Bobby Clark. The Flyers continue to press, but then they picked up a series of penalties, the first to Gary Dornhopper, and that resulted in the Leafs' goal at 11.43, with Sittler and Williams getting the assist on Turnbull's fourth power play goal of the playoffs and his fourth overall, right from the blue line up the slot as Stevenson had gone behind the net to challenge Sittler, lost the stick, was slow in covering, and tried to make a play through a maze of players without a stick, but it went high over his left shoulder for the score, and the Leafs led one to nothing. Later, Paul Holmgren, Took on a one-man challenge against Bruce Boudreau. Picked up a five-minute major for fighting. Plus a ten-minute game misconduct. The Leafs attacked every man up. Couldn't score. And just after the replacement for Holmgren came back on the ice, the Flyers picked up an illegal substitution penalty and skated through the latter part of that first period. Almost seven minutes shorthanded, but held off. The Leafs leading one to nothing. Out shooting Philadelphia eight to seven with the Flyers picking up four of the game's five penalties. The L.A. Boston game will start 11 o'clock Eastern time. That's the other quarterfinal in action tonight. And hang on now as their intermission activities will continue after this. Back here at Maple Leaf Gardens, Gene Hart with our guest Frank King Clancy, who's been with the Maple Leafs in some capacity or other since 1931. And King, I'm going to make you smile now. Do these names bring memories to you? Lauren Chabot, Harry Dara, Stuart Adam, Charlie Conacher, Harvey Jackson, Joe Primo. Joe, uh, uh, you're go Gene, you're going back a long, long way. These are great names that were great hockey players, and I enjoyed playing with them. I had a wonderful time, as you say. I've been in Toronto here all my life, except for 11 years that I played, that I refereed in the National Hockey League. And I want to tell you something. These fellas have their work cut out for them now. I'd hate to be a referee in these games. Now, the names I mentioned played with you on the Leafs' first Stanley Cup championship club in 1932-33. That's right. I came here in 1930-31, Gene, but I was with Ottawa for nine years before that, and I was on the Stanley Cup there for three. Well, we had three Stanley Cup teams in Ottawa. Had some great teams in Ottawa, too. What made that line of Jackson, Primo, and Conacher nicknamed the kid line so good? Well, I have to think that we had two powerful shots on the wings, and we had a great playmaker in Primo at center. Conacher could shoot a puck as hard as any man that I ever saw, and Jackson could make plays. They were a great line, but uh, to me, uh, uh, the game now is, truthfully, I enjoy it better than I enjoyed those games, because those games were very, very close. These games, of course, are a little close to playoff hockey, but... To me, the people say uh, old-time hockey. And listen, there's nothing like the present-day hockey. These guys are great out here. Uh, this Philadelphia club here is a tough club. Well, you saw what they did there. They held the Toronto club out for seven minutes. And I want to tell you, that's some feat to hold this club of ours out for seven minutes because this is where we have played very, very well all season. And, of course, your hockey club... Well, I can't say enough for them. They're a great hockey, a great hockey club. Clark is the first time I've, saw, I've ever seen Bobby Clark getting hit tonight, and he took an awful shot, and I said to Harold Ballard sitting with me over there, I said, Clark is finished. But the first thing I know, he's down in our end and nearly put the puck in our net. We're going to be back with King Clancy after this. TAF-TV, Channel 29, Philadelphia. A Taft station. Back here, Gene Hart with Frank King Clancy of the Leafs, and how much have lights on the Zamboni machine done to revolutionize hockey? I think that's the biggest innovation that they've ever had in the National Hockey League or in any other league. When we played here, we used to just go out there and, you know, play the periods and uh, skate in ruts in the third and second and third periods. Now the, you've got a new sheet of ice every period, and it certainly helps to speed the game up. You'd have lasted till you were 60 with new sheets. Oh, I don't think so, Gene. <laughs> Our guest has been Frank King Clancy, and for being our wonderful guest and being such a wonderful human being, we'd like to present you with the following gifts. Drive sails wide of Perron's glove, off the stick of Savard. Centering pass, in tight from Shutt, who took a good pass from Lafleur off the left wing board. Shutt, in front to Savard, score! The Canadians take a 2-1 lead with only 
only 35 seconds left in the first period. Bad blind pass behind the net with nobody there, but shut and then bang home the goal and Canadians lead and at 19.25. Ouch. A good alert play. Those hurt the last minute. A goal at any time, but especially in the last minute of play. Steve Shutt made a good alert play for the Canadians. He saw the puck coming behind our net. He just stepped in behind Bernie, cut off the pass, and Serge Savard very wisely moved in from his position on right point. He just moved unmolested into the slot. Shut found him all alone. Savard didn't even bother to stop that puck. He just had a quick wrist shot go that cleanly beat Bernie Perrot up high on the stick side. So that puts the Montreal Canadiens ahead 2-1 with 35 seconds remaining in the first period. Serge Savard from shot. And for Lemaire on the year, that's number 28, as Gene pointed out, coming from near retirement to uh, having a fantastic year. Off the face off, the Flyers advance it to the Montreal zone. Dryden uh, cuts it down and ties up play as he doesn't want to take any chances in the Montreal zone with only 22 seconds left on the clock. Terry, good, good centering pass by Shutt as Jacques Lemaire picked up 300, and they're going to announce that now. Let's pick it up. Jacques Lemaire's goal was his number 300 of his career in the National Hockey League regular season play. Face off to the left of Dryden. Pierre Bouchard winds up behind his own net to the far side. Flagged down by Lonsbury. Through a screen, almost had Dryden going the wrong way. Centering pass, no one in the slot except Montreal players. And it's cleared back to the Flyers' end by Pete Mahovlich as time ticks away. Five seconds left in the period, and that should be pretty much it. Three, two, one. And the siren goes to end the first period of play with a score. Montreal two, the Flyers one. Because today, just as in 1842, Every storm, Gene Hart, along with guest analyst Terry Crisp and Don Earl, 2-1 Canadians. There were four penalties, three to Philadelphia, and each team picked up a power play goal. The Flyers first came at 540, make that 547. Seleski from the right side, number 15 on the year, from Oris Kindrichuk and Harvey Bennett. But the Canadians got that back with Jimmy Watson off serving two minutes when Cornwire had one deflected off Tommy Bladen's skate from the left wing corner. His 22nd of the year, the 399th of his career, Lefleur and Mahavlich got the assist at 1240. And then at 1940, just uh, 20 seconds, or actually uh, less, uh, 1935, 25 seconds left in the period, it was Lemaire who got his 300th of his career, the 28th of the year, as he deflected home a shot from Savard with shit getting the other assist to Flyers, losing the puck behind their own net. Uh, that kind of play has cost them trouble all night. So it's 2-1 to one Canadians, the shot's 12-8 to eight for Montreal. Thank you, Gene. We mentioned numerous times, you know, this is a 60-minute hockey game at the best of times, but the Canadians, we uh, feel that if you can contain them the first five minutes and the last five minutes of each period, you can put them on the run. They're dangerous all the time, but we've got to contain them in their own end. We've mentioned numerous times about their mobile defensemen. Tonight, so far, their defense have hurt us. All right, two to one the score, and our intermission activities will continue after this. Back here at the Forum after one period of play, the score is 2 on Montreal, and what's been uh, one of the better games of the year between these two clubs, at least thus far, our guest, publisher of the Hockey News, the Bible of Hockey, Ken McKenzie. Ken, it's uh, getting so that you're a perennial visitor of ours here in the booth in Montreal. It's about the only chance we get a chance to find you. You're traveling as much as we are these days. Well, it's always nice to come with you, Don, and I certainly enjoy it. It wouldn't be a, a season if I didn't get on with you at least once. Ken, uh, how many years is this for the Hockey News? We're in our 30th season right now. We're like the hockey teams. We go by seasons. 30th season or 30th year, Don. And honest to gosh, it just seems like it was just yesterday. Of course, a lot has been talked about. A lot has been written and still is being written every day in the uh, daily newspapers about uh, the problems in sports. But yet when you see a game like the Flyers and the Canadians uh, here tonight, you uh, forget about all those problems because this, this is really what hockey is all about. You bet. This is... Uh, one of the finest uh, periods of hockey I've seen this season. I know the Montreal fans feel the same way because we're watching the two best teams in hockey right now, Philadelphia Flyers, the Montreal Canadiens. The two best teams by far, I, I, I'll make a prediction right now that they'll meet in the finals. In the Stanley Cup. Finals. I think that's pretty safe. These two teams, you bet the best teams in hockey, and I would say the two best franchises. Certainly Philadelphia has to be the best, if not the second best. And I think Montreal is the... It's between the two of them. Just great franchises. Too bad they don't have more franchises like that in the National Hockey League. Of course, as we've often said, the, the success of any uh, sports franchise, hockey, of course, is what we're talking about, has got to start right at the very top and permeate the entire organization. And it ends up showing the end result on the ice down below. 
Well, Ed Snyder, the chairman of the board of the Flyers, done a magnificent job since he took over the team since inception. And what I like about the way he's handled the club is he's got lots of good people around him, and he's given them full responsibility. He's trusted his employees, let them go their own way, and he has made many mistakes. He's got an outstanding general manager, coach, publicity department, every, every phase of it. And if you look at the press and radio guide, Don, you'll see that there's more personnel listed with the Philadelphia Flyers front office than any other NHL club. And every one of those fellas does a great job. And it's, I know in my travels, you know, I hit every city and every league. And uh, it's, a, it's always a pleasure to visit the, the Spectrum and see the people at the Flyers because they've got a real good organization. As you say, it permeates from the top. And, uh, you know, like the old saying, the, uh, the owner that has his foot on the bench gets the great results. Okay, we'll talk more with Ken McKenzie, a little hockey and a little newspapers, Doc. And we'll be right back right after this timeout. Schaefer Croissants, it's beer. Croissant gives Schaefer its consistent great taste. Drink it down, celebrate, it tastes consistently great. Consistently great. WTAF-TV, Channel 29, Philadelphia. Taft Broadcasting, serving the Delaware Valley. Back here at the Montreal Forum, we're talking with the publisher of the Hockey News, uh, oftentimes call, and we, we look at it as the hockey Bible, Ken McKenzie. Ken, uh, you get a lot of mail, I'm sure, in the course of a week or a month uh, during the hockey uh, season. And give us some of the reflections, some of the feelings you get of what people are feeling out there about our great game of professional hockey. Well, we get a lot of mail, and uh, some of the letters, uh, they're strong for overtime. A lot of people think that they should bring back overtime. You know, they had it years ago, and it was stopped really as a war measure. A lot of people think they should have that 10 minute sudden death overtime after every league game. Other people think that the game has gone too much, they, this anti-violence, anti but they can see a little more rugged play. They think that the game misses something today. Uh, some people talk about a merger with the WHA. Uh, other people think that maybe hockey would be better than the National Hockey League if they had a few less franchises and strengthen up the, you know, the, the fewer franchises, but strengthen those up with the players that are on the weak franchises right now. Uh, a lot of people think that the hockey news should put more in about Canadian college hockey and not so much about the U.S. college hockey. On the subject, uh, what is the future as far as the NHL is concerned with U.S. college hockey players? Well, I think this is where the hockey players in the National League are going to come from in the future, are going to come out of the U.S. college ranks. As you know, Don, they're coming up more and more from the U.S. college ranks. And we get a lot of letters. We're getting more letters from people in the United States about the U.S. college hockey. And we're... Uh, increasing our coverage. We're at two and a half, three pages now, where we used to only be uh, one page, and we, we try to cover all the major conferences. I think that's the coming uh, area to, to which to cover. I know. I look forward to it because it gives me a chance to uh, uh, find out what the various uh, colleges, of course, uh, New England, where I came from, uh, the Minneapolis, uh, Duluth area, uh, the Colorado, Denver area, where some more, and Michigan is coming, uh, coming on real strong. Uh, time is always a problem. Hey, if you are just getting involved in the game of hockey, uh, Ken McKenzie has an offer he'd like to make to you, and I think it's a good one. Yes, anybody would like a free introductory copy of the Hockey News, all I have to do is write to the Hockey News, Box 248. That's 248, Montreal, Canada. We'd be glad to send him a free introductory copy. Okay, Ken McKenzie, publisher of the Hockey News, our guest, and for being our guest, the... Is it Charlie? No, Pa, no. Charlie, 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 Wait a minute. Them blackbirds. Them blackbirds, the ones that found him. No, that can't be, Pa. It was them that brought Willie's body into the sheriff. They'd have said something if they found that other fella. Yeah, he, he's right, Pa. You know how they are about shooting and such. Hell, they didn't even raise a frown when, when we were teasing that girl. <laughs> well, if that's the truth, there's only one thing left. He's hurt, and he's crawled off somewhere to lick his wounds. He's hurt as bad as you think he is. He ain't gone far, neither. Now, I want him found. I want y'all boys to go search every cabin, every gully, every shack until you find the man that killed your brother. Well, we'll find him, Paul. Yeah. If he's dead, I want to know it. But if he's alive... Wouldn't that be pretty?
I never figured hell for angels. So maybe I'm not dead. But you'll be fine. Just fine. Well, considering I never expected to wake up at all, I guess it must be. For two days, we did not think you would live. But the last two days, you've slept like a lamb. I've been out for four days? On Thursday, you were among us for a few minutes and took some soup from Mother Tice. You do not remember? No. I remember you. <laughs> My name is Erica, but you must call me Miss Hanks. <laughs> yes, Miss Hanks. I will get you some food. Where's my gun? I do not know. There was only this. As men find out I ain't dead, they're gonna come looking for me. They will not come here. Why not? This is the Bruderhof. What? The Bruderhof. Except it is not really a Bruderhof yet. Just a town where no one lived, and we stopped here because many of our people were ill. Are you going to stay here? It has not yet been decided, but we are building a church. And if we stay, we must also build a wall to keep the world out. It is the way of the Simonites. Simonites? Is that what you called? Yes. Yeah. After Simon Peter. You have read the New Testament? My mom used to read the Bible to us every night. Mr. McCann, the elders... How did you know my name? When I found you, you asked that the word of your death be sent to your mother. Did you? No. You did not die, praise God. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> what were you saying about the elders? The elders the uh, explanation on that illegal substitution was the fact that the Flyers failed to place a man in the penalty box to serve uh, the penalty for Paul Holmgren. The book uh, clearly states that the only way you can bring a man back on the ice following such a penalty is from the penalty box only, and the Flyers brought him off the bench instead, and there's your illegal substitution. Don, you have, in that five-minute penalty, you have... Any length of time within the five minutes, say you want to let four minutes go by, then put one of your players in the box, fine and dandy. You're cutting it a little narrow at that time. If you don't get a stoppage in play in that last minute, then like, which happened to us right there, we didn't put our man in. They had a long whistle go, no stoppage in play. The five minutes come up. Our man come over off the bench, which is the illegal substitution. We would have been better off, as I mentioned to you, just to play four men until we got a whistle, and then put a man say if he had to go over, step in, and step out again, which or we even, didn't. Say. Or even forcing a whistle with an icing call. Right. These things you don't think of right on the spur of the moment, Don, in the pressure of playoff hockey and whatnot, so we got penalized for that. Penalties in that period, three to the Flyers, one to Toronto, and the Flyers one for three on the power play, and that's been the lone score thus far. Ian Turnbull's fourth goal of the playoffs, assists go to Sittler and Williams. Don't forget, if the Flyers play on Sunday night, it will be an 8 o'clock game, and it will be on WTAF-TV along with WCAU Radio. That's if the Flyers play Sunday night, whether it be against Toronto or the opening game against Boston in the semifinals, it will be an 8 o'clock game, and it will be seen locally on TV 29 and heard on CAU Radio. All set for the second period. Let's go, Flyers. Let's go, Gene Hart. Thank you, Don Earl. Sittler, Williams, and McDonald with Turnbull and Sounding. Leach and Lonsbury centered by Clark with Daly and Jimmy Watson. Dave Newell, the referee. Neil Armstrong and Ron Finn, the linesman. They signal right for the goal judge behind Stevenson. Left, the goal judge behind Wayne Thomas, who was tested early. And then uh, the Leafs kept the Flyers pretty well away in the second half of the period because of Philadelphia skating most of the second half shorthanded. Now Sounding has the puck at his own end. Feeds up on the near side. Shoved into the flyer zone weakly by Sittler. Dug out by Lonsbury. Looks up the slot and clears right past everyone the length of the ice. Curls around Thomas into the far corner of Leaf zone. Touched up by Turnbull. Speaking about Boston, uh, they'll try to nail down their series on the West Coast against Los Angeles starting at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Boston leads in that series three games to two. But Terry, the way Rogie Vachon has come back in that series, hard to tell. 
Home ice out there, and as you mentioned, on the West Coast. Logie's a tough little goaltender. He can play anything off. Captain Bobby Clark out there trying to get our fellows back on the track again. Get a goal and get us back in the game. I talked to Clark in between periods, and I asked him if he knew that McDonald and Sittler were sort of taking runs at him. He said, yeah, I said, I'm well aware of it. He said, he saw Sittler coming that last time, but just only managed to get partway out of the way when Sittler took the elbowing penalty on him. All right, the Leafs took off the Sittler line. The Flyers took off Clark, put out McLeish. Then Red Kelly put back Settler, and now McLeish is going off. And let's see what referee Dave Newell does. He said, uh-uh. So again, for the first time, we see Red Kelly jockeying to get the Settler line away from Clark and Lonsbury. Ricky will be asking Freddie how long he wants him to stay out against this line or if they want them. As soon as they get good possession or get the puck deep in the leaf zone, come straight off. So possibly Freddie will say come straight off as soon as you get good possession in the leaf zone. In fact, the Flyers trio out there is standing up and ready to come back on as it's iced by Joe Watson and after it is Turnbull and he'll touch up and let's see if Leach, Lonsbury and Clark come back on and they will if Sittler stays out. I would have to think that if uh, if Sittler is changed that uh, the Flyers will try to counter with it. Flyers board chairman uh, Ed Snyder across the way watching uh, along with general manager and vice president Keith Allen and their respective wives. Interested uh, spectators here at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens tonight. Harold Ballard not looking all that happy in the pillbox across the way. Well, Clark did come out against Sittler who remained out until Clark got in the face-off circle and that line went off. And Thompson came out with McKenney and Ferguson, Turnbull and Salming. Flyers defensive pairing. Joe Watson back to the point to Salming. Goes on the backhander. Weak shot deflected. Thompson tries to keep it in. Kicked out to Lonsbury on the off wing. Comes through with Clark. Clark tripped up at the leaf line. And Jim McKinney turns with Ferguson on his left. Right up the middle of the Philadelphia line. Rolls win in on Stevenson. Glove saves and pokes it past Ferguson. Right onto the stick of Thompson. A turn bowl. And his shot off the glove sand of Stevenson as the Flyers gave that shot up. Here comes Leach through to the leaf line. Going into the near corner, puts one wide of Thomas as he was slowed down by Sounding, and here comes Errol Thompson away to Sounding at center with Ferguson and McKenney on his right. Sounding over the line, backhander. Stevenson the save as Sounding appears now uh, more desirous of taking charge offensively than he has in the earlier games. They dump it into the zone, hits Joe Watson. He tries to clear out. Sounding going to go right into the slot. He's hooked, and no penalty is called as out comes Thornhofer up ice against Pellick. Can't reach the puck, and Tulloch takes Dornhofer down as Ferguson with the puck turns in his own end and lifts it up to Salming on the right wing. Rolls it through for McKenney, chasing it with Tommy Bladen. Pokes it past Bladen and then falls down as he had to make the off-balance move and Pierce to have done some straining as he gets up very slowly now and cuts off to the lead bench as Tom Bladen avoids the forechecking of Ashby and sends it away to McLeish who crisscrosses at center with Barber. Shot wide of Thomas by McLeish and center ice. Rolled through into the neutral zone by Tulloch. There is Rick LaPointe circling back at his own line. Dumps it deeper to DuPont away from the fourth checking of Ashby. Has Billy Barber with it now. Away on the far side and LaPointe at the leaf line. Fires it in the corner right of Thomas. Ricochets in on the goaltender. Pokes it free to Boutet. And Boutet up on the near wing. Away too far at center ice for Ashby. Taken by LaPointe. Throw to Seleski to Kenrichuk. He can't read it. Pellick dumps it out the center to Ashby. Taken away by Rick LaPointe again. Has to roll it back to his line for DuPont. Waiting for his line to clear out of the zone to Seleski. Zaleski taken out by Pellick. Still tries to jam it into the zone. Blocked the second time. And finally, Rick LaPointe does get it down behind Wayne Thomas. Three there. And holding the puck is Borea Salming. As Ashby is aligned with Neely and Boutet. And the Flyers go Kindrachuk with Bridgman and Zaleski. Here up ice comes Pellick along the near side at center ice. Rolls it through looking for Boutet, who didn't see it and preceded the puck offside. 17-18 remaining second period. one to nothing Toronto. There's been a change in the official scoring on the Toronto goal. Instead of Williams getting an assist, they've given it to Borea Salming. Play in center ice. Now over the line comes Warner. Back pass to Boudreau down in the offensive right wing corner. Bunched out by Bob Daly. Warner trips over Jimmy Watson's stick and falls on the puck in the near corner and not only suffers that ignominy, but has the faceoff come to center ice. I'm guessing that Boudreau had thoughts about going uh, after... Jim Watson on that situation until he saw the count alongside of him. Borja Salming uh, constantly being discussed as uh, whether he or Larry Robinson is the top defenseman in the NHL today. All right, that's the Warner, Boudreau, and Evans, young kid line up from Oak City. Here comes Kimberchuk through, dumped off the stick at center. 
Rolled back into the leaf zone behind Thomas by Zaleski. Rolls to the near corner. Warner bumped by Kelly is out there along with Zaleski. Kendrachuk steals. Front to Bird. Shot. And he fired it over the top of the net. And he hit the right place as Thomas went down, but he missed the corner. Now Kendrachuk back to the right point. Bob Daly a bouncing puck and scales it about eight rows into the second deck. That's been Daly's problem, Terry, all through this playoffs is not uh, getting his shots on net. As much as you want to, and, and you talk to the count, and he says that he's trying his best to get that thing low on the net just to cause a little bit of trouble. I don't know if it's something that you inherited, but just over the years you developed, but all his shots go up high off the side of the net. If he ever gets it on target, we're going to get a fistful. That last shift out there, the port credit comment, Bob Kelly come out, started to stir things up. We've said so often, Don, he's quite capable of doing that every shift out there. Sittler, McDonald, Williams, Turnbull, and Salming, Lonsbury, Leach, Clark, along with Bladen. Here comes McDonald, flipping it over center ice, taking a bump from Bladen as everyone is late getting in, and Joe Watson looks on the near side, goes back behind the net, own offensive right wing corner to Bladen, up ice to the flyer line. Here comes Bobby Clark, gives it away to Turnbull at the leap line, too far up ice, trying to head man Salming and Sittler. And here comes the flyers, Lonsbury and Clark over the line against uh, Salming. Drop pass Clark, he had Leach in front, couldn't hit him with a pass. Lonsbury tied up, centers wing, Thomas blocks it smartly with a stick. McDonald's pulled down, tries to get past Clark, who slaps it back in along the near side. And it's lifted out of the rink off the stick of Boya sounding on a deflection with Ross Lonsbury touching up last. Good forechecking by Bobby Clark down there. Gene, just persistent, to, uh, Lanny McDonald trying to come out of that end. Clark, he just wouldn't give him any room to skate whatsoever. Just stuck to him like glue and force the face off in their end zone. Dave Tiger Williams very smartly got in the way of that Clark attempted pass to Leach who was wide open cutting down that right side on that last shift. Incidentally a little uh, late but better late than never uh, Keith and Joyce Allen uh, Joyce and Keith Allen celebrating the 29th wedding anniversary today and what better gift than to wrap up this quarterfinal series against Toronto. Downing retreats away from Clark bumped off behind the net breaks free kicks it far corner where Leach will battle for it with Ferguson bounces out to Turnbull he loses it again it's Leach right in front of his own net to Clark tries a shot gets it again scores ah. the scores oh, Bobby Clark there it is again Don that second effort by Bobby Clark he never quits up never loses sight of that puck he shot it it was stopped he picked up his own rebound and put it off both posts and in I just gonna say a bit of a billiard shot there by Clarky nice play by Reggie Leach also to come out of the corner get in front of Wayne Thomas to screen him so Clarky gets a good shot Clark intercept that errant pass by the Maple Leaf player. Right here, he shoots it, hits the defenseman, comes right onto a stick. Clark, a quick wrist shot high, off the post, ping in the far side, ties this game at 1-1, and we've seen this so often right there. Clark, he never takes his eye off that puck, and that's one thing about it. You don't turn your back on that puck if you don't have to. For Clark, his third playoff goal. I'll tell you, Terry, one of the rare times that you'll see Salming Blake block a shot and then be out of position for the rebound. And up along the near side, Errol Thompson with the score tight, streaking at center for the Leafs. Over the line on the top of the right wing circle. Backhander high over the top of the net. Deflection, if so, in the space off circle to the left of Stevenson. Nice play by Big Boost Dupont on that one to keep the Leafs player way out to the outside. Didn't try to do anything fancy. He just knew that he had him. Kept him out there and forced him to put it high off. Captain Bobby Clark, his fourth playoff goal, and ties this game at 1-1 and a much needed goal for our guys to keep the spirit up and keep us rolling. Don, you're pointing to your sheet, and it says on your sheet that should only be his third playoff goal. Well, that's why I was That's what I was checking. Right. Nevertheless, we'll take it in this game to give us a 1-1 tie, no matter what they want to put on their sheets. I guess. Amen. Flyers now bring out Kendrachuk between Seleski and Bridgman. All right, at the circle, they try to kick it free, but Jimmy Watson takes it. He's with... Uh, Bob Daly brings it up the center, will cross that red line and fire it in the near corner. Bridgman goes after with a big, strong Pat Boutet. Knocked away by Thomas. Boutet battles, but it's Randy Carlisle who's excelled as a rookie defenseman for the Leafs. Away to Neely and up at center ice. Feeds behind Ashby. Caroms to the near boards in the Philadelphia end and lifted back at center by Jimmy Watson. Caroms to Bob Daly. Gonna make a rush, but he feeds in the open far wing. Neely beats Seleski to it. Rolls it back into the Leafs zone to Pellick in the circle left of Wayne Thomas. Does an inside pivot, sends it up at center ice, tipped away by Bridgman into the leaf zone. Carlisle up to center to Jimmy Watson, crosses off to Zaleski, he's onside, will fire through a screen, blocked by Pellick to the near corner. Bridgman in there with Carlisle, gets it up to Boutet, away, looking for Ashby. He's blocked once, blocked the second time, but now starts out with Pellick and Neely. Ashby right up the middle, tries to split the defense. 
cuts to the inside. The Flyers have it blocked off smartly by Daly. And then Jimmy Watson away to Kendrachuk at center. Kendrachuk, a back pass. He had Zaleski, led him too far. Don fires short side. It's in the crease. And Wayne Thomas was shaky there, but the Leafs break out quickly on the right side. Bob Neely working past his man. Drop pass to Ashby over the line. He'll try to get a shot to Neely. He's pulled down. He falls down. No penalty there. The Flyers fail to clear. Played by Turnbull in the air circle. He tries to dump it in, but there is the ever-present Bobby Clark to slide to center. Borea sounding his challenge and has to go back into the Flyers' zone as he was three-on-one at center ice. We have an offside lead. 14.07 remaining in the the second period with the score the Philadelphia Flyers won and the Toronto Maple Leafs won. Double check Clarkie's uh, goal scoring in the playoffs this year and that was his third. So it's Flyers won and the Leafs won as we're still early in the second period of play. All right the big line out for the Leafs with Salming and Turnbull and the Flyers go McLeish with Barber and Dornhofer. Dorney picking it off at center from Sittler cuts to the off wing rolls it weakly past Salming chases it in the Leafs defensive right wing corner. Bond out, but still behind the net. Double teamed by Tiger Williams as the puck rolls free to the near side. Joe Watson will challenge Lanny McDonald. He's beaten, and McDonald tries to get it out. Blocked by McLeish in front from Turnbull as the Leafs getting careless, but finally recovers away from Dornhofer and scoots behind the Leaf net as Salming had been out of the play, losing his stick behind Wayne Thomas. All right, everybody swings up ice. Turnbull alongside his own net to Salming. A blind back pass through his legs to the flyer line along the new one, taken off by Billy Barber. And shot the length of the ice, but he gets the break as it goes in on Wayne Thomas. We played 6.40 into the second period with play on. The Flyers have tied it on a goal by Clark. Up ice Turnbull. Four checked smartly by Billy Barber as the Flyers not allowing the Leafs to break out smartly. Now finally it is. Here comes Sittler, and he'll be trailed by McDonald over the line on the right wing. Tries to get inside Joe Watson. Play broken up. Lonsbury on the near side. Loses at the Salming. There's a shot knocked down. Salming rolls it in front. A shot hit the post by McDonald as it cleared into the front again right through Bladen to the far side Williams with a blind sider wide of the net it comes back to the near point sounding on the backhander rolls it down in the near corner Sittler top of the right wing circle in front to McDonald yeah. and now goes the red light as that one appeared to go through the number five hole Terry Johnny McDonald in an ever present spot where he's been his whole series right down the middle of the slot and Daryl Sittler has been doing his whole series Found him loose there again, fed a pass out to him, like the stretch it through Captain Bobby Clark to his feet. Lanny McDonald gets it, full tilt, a quick wrist shot. Our defenseman went down to screen it in front of Seth. I think Poppy blocked and Seth through just a little bit. Right low on the ice between Seth's pad, and Lanny McDonald gives Toronto a 2-1 lead with 12.43 remaining in the second period. Sittler and Salming combine again as they combined on the first goal for Turnbull to give the Leafs a 2-1 lead at 7-17 of this the second period of play. You now you wonder if Wayne wasn't guessing a little bit because uh, McDonald has gone up on him all night, all through the series, that time along the ice. Now, boom, Boudreau knocks him off in front. The puck comes to the blue line, shot blocked away from Pellick by Seleski, and here comes Kimberchuk smartly to his own line. As the Leafs put the young kids out there and see if they can stir up some more Bruja. Buck rolls down behind Thomas to the near side. Bob Kelly loses it to Carlisle up on the near side to Bob Warner. He fails to get it out. Now Carlisle piles up Kelly who kicks it behind the Philadelphia net. Warner over skates. Zaleski behind the net kicks it free. Kelly looks to center. It comes out in front. Nobody there but Mike Pellick. And he clears it all the way down the ice and the Leafs will be called for icing as it's touched up now by Rick LaPointe. Kelly held down on the ice deep in the Toronto zone for what appeared to be an indeterminate amount of time. 11.59 to go in the second period. It's 2-1 Toronto. Back here at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, Flyers uh, have uh, pretty much uh, been the team that come from behind throughout most of this series, and they face that situation again here tonight in Toronto. Ferguson out there with McKenney and Thompson, Turnbull and Salming. The Flyers go Barber, Dornhofer, and McLeish. Centering right through the goal mouth. Blocked to Bob Daly through a screen. Knocked in front by Dornhopper. Who's wrapped up by Turnbull. Pulled down and Turnbull's going to get off. In front to Billy Barber. A shot. Tip save. Back to Barber. A shot in on the net by Daly. Grabbed by Salming. And now Turnbull's going to go off on the hold against Dornhopper. Only the second penalty of the game against the Leafs. And thus only the second power play opportunity that the Flyers have enjoyed thus far. Time of this call comes at 8 minutes and 18 seconds as Turnbull will go off for a holding. 
And don't forget about that 10th anniversary edition of the Flyers yearbook. The nostalgia section just loaded with pictures of the Flyers' early years. Your prize, $2 at the Spectrum. By mail, $2.50. Send your request to Champion Publications. They're at Box 2429, Philadelphia, 19147. So we have Ian Turnbull in the penalty box right now. Gina, a chance for us to get back in this game and tie it up. Thomas has not looked the bellwether in this period as he did in the first. He's looked a little shaky. All right, Ferguson out along with Thompson. And they go Tracy Pratt on for the first time. Back to the far point for the count daily. Holds. He's got Barbara on the near point. Right corner to McLeish in front to Clark. Clark, a backhanded Leach. Oh, and Thomas guessed beautifully as Leach tried to poke it through him from the crease. Now Billy Barber from the point. Knocked down in front by Sounding. Cleared to the near side. Leach digs it out. Hold. Wants to set up a play from the right wing board. Holds along the near circle. Gets it back to Billy Barber at the point. Rolling puck shot. And Steve Thomas grabs it as the alley is open right up the middle and he saw it all the way. Everywhere Clark he went on that particular play, you saw Boya Salming. They came darting out of that left wing corner and there was Salming right on his back. Bobby Clark right there just didn't get good with it on, on his backhand. He passed it across to Reggie. Reggie had the whole side of his net but just missed it by a tick. And in this instance, an inch as good as a mile was in tying it. And Thomas is moving with him. So we still have a minute and 37 remaining in this power play. Had he gone on the backhand, he might have had a chance. All right, Clark against Ferguson. Gets from Leach back to Barber. Barber holds over to Bob Daly at the right point. Right circle to McLeish. McLeish holds, still holding. Nearby pass to Leach, and he fanned as he was set up near circle. Goes back behind the net to Clark. Clark holds right behind the net. Got Leach out in front. He's got Billy Barber near side. Close again, shot. Blocked in front. Clark with a rebound. Out to the far point. Daly at the board. Goes through a screen wide of the net. To McLeish behind the net. Tied up. Now Thompson runs over Clark. Digs it out along the near side and ices it. Fires put on great pressure for a full minute. As that's the time remaining on the advantage. Go to Clark at center ice. He's got Lonsbury over the line. Back to Billy Barber. Weak pass. Read by Boria Salmon. Played up ice. Daly going over the line against Lanny McDonald. Good straight set. And he's trying to go out on the trip, although it appeared to be a good straight set, and McDonald fell over his pick. They've got 10 32 remaining in the second period with the score the Toronto Maple Leafs 2 and the Philadelphia Flyers 1. Chalk up another even up call for referee Dave Newell on that one, Don. Big Count Daly is playing the puck all the way, reached over top of him, hit the puck, playing it. Referee Dave Newell coming down, called Big Count for holding with his ice edge. Another even up call, so four aside for 50 seconds when number two Trimble will come out. And then for a minute and 10, they will have the power play. Problem is, the penalties aren't even up by a long shot. Down behind the net, Jimmy Watson has it. They'll play five aside for 46 seconds. Plays back to the near side for DuPont, challenged by Neely. Back to Jimmy Watson, and away to DuPont at center comes with Zaleski and Kimberchuk, three on two. Tries to get past Carlisle, does into the leaf left wing corner. Bumped hard by Pellick, takes Pellick out. Tries to center the puck, Kimberchuk takes it away from Carlisle. Looks to center, goes back behind the net as Pellick reads off the play. Loses it to Zaleski. Zaleski wants to dump it in, nobody to give it to. Now it's Jimmy Watson down in the corner, far side pass to Kimberchuk. Run at by Pellick, still controls the puck. Wants to get it back to the point. Can't make a play. Finally, Pellick steals it away to Ashby. And Ashby behind the net. Swings to the near side. Works up on his own right wing. Plays a pass off the skate of Kimberchuk to the leaf line on the far wing. The play is blocked as it hit Neil Armstrong. And we get a stoppage right at the leaf line along the far side. The penalty is over to Turnbull. And the Leafs now have a minute and nine seconds on the power play. One of the fans has uh, discarded his program in the direction of the ice and the fracas right in front of the Flyers bench. Lanny McDonald, 16 playoff points as he's picked up his ninth goal of the playoffs, which right now stands as the go-ahead goal. That's also the best in the playoffs now, moving him one ahead of Boston's Bobby Schmartz. And of course, Darrell Sittler has broken all these records with 13 assists and 18 points. And he, hold, he uh, now holds the new records in both of those departments. All right. We've got the big three out there. Sittler, McDonald, Williams, Turnbull, and not Salming, but Jim McKinney at the right point to give Salming a little win. He'll probably come back on in the next shift. Flyers go Clark with Lonsbury, Joe Watson with Bladen. Rank wide pass at the flyer line. Breaking for the net is Salming. Uh, Sittler has turned... A shot by McDonald is blocked. Joe Watson up into the far corner to Clark. Clark up to the near side to Lonsbury. He can't get past McKinney. They jam one another up against the near side. 
Four players, now a fifth, the leap in there, but it's Clark away with a puck coming against Turnbull, one on one. Over the line. Shot on Thomas, who makes the split and kicks it to the deep wing on the far side. Galmo's given away in the slot by Tiger Williams on an errant pass, but it's McKinney at center with 30 seconds left on the brief power play. Williams over the line. Drops to McKinney. He's going to be in, but loses it to Billy Barber. And Barber pokes it past Landy McDonald after taking a hip check. Now it's into the leaf zone. McKinney's still out there, along with Sittler. Right wing pass over the line comes uh, Tiger Williams. He tries to slap it, and it goes off the end of the rink from the deflection by Tommy Bladen, or no deflection, and we'll get a face off at center ice with 12 seconds left on the Bob Daly penalty. Two to one leaps late in the second period. A reminder again that if the Flyers play on Sunday, it will be an 8 o'clock game, and it will be seen locally on TV 29 and heard, of course, on WCAU radio. That's if the Flyers play, whether it be against Toronto to end this series or against Boston to open that series, it will be seen on TV 29 and heard on CAU radio, and it will be an 8 o'clock start, uh, which differs from the normal 7 o'clock Sunday night start. All right, still the same five out for the Leafs, and the Flyers go Barber with McLeish, Layton, and Jimmy Watson. Turnbull down behind the Leaf net uh, to McDonald. Tries to give it away near side. Blayton has it, loses it back to McDonald. Takes him hard into the boards. They'll jam it up, and Dave Newell quickly stops play with just one second left on the Bob Daly penalty. Ironic, Terry. All of Turnbull's goals have been via the power play for the Leafs in uh, the series this year. We've said numerous times, Don, if their power play has been killing us so far in this series, it's kept them alive and kept them moving. So we have to, we said it umpteen times. We've got to quit taking penalties against this club. Well, they've got nine of their 17 goals in the power play. They keep that average almost one out of every two in the two years of playoffs against the Flyers. Now McLeish and Sittler go at it. And McLeish is dumped out of the circle to the left of Stevenson. It'll be Billy Barber. Goes right out to the point sounding. Lost to Barber. Who comes out now with Daly and over the line. McLeish couldn't reach it. Down to the offensive right wing corner. Drop pass to Barber. He's on the backhand to the point. Tommy Bladen in on the net. Rebound. They fight for it. McLeish looks to shoot it. No play as they were jammed up in front. Back to the point. Bladen through 16 players. Knocked down in front by Lanny McDonald. The Turnbull. And he just flips it up on the far boards into the flyer zone as the leaf state calm. Nowhere to fire that one through. Barber at center ice. Looks through for McLeish over the line. Broken up smartly by Pellick and lifted down the ice by Bob Warner, who's out there now, along with uh, Evans. And now Boudreaux will join them shortly. Pass by Barber along his own wing is cleared away by Salming back to Jimmy Watts, who lifts the center ice. 7.45 left in the period. Leaves drive it back into the flyer zone, cutting across as Boudreaux. Takes on Jimmy Watson, who can't get it out. Now Werner is in there with Watson and Boudreau, and we get a stoppage of play as the young kid line being used with effect by Red Kelly. We have 7.37 remaining in the second period of this game six of the F quarterfinal round playoffs with the lead to the first. That's the guy they are now calling Pappy Bernie Perrant. Bernard Marcel Perrant is looking on intently from the Flyers bench across the way. All right, let's point out with DuPont and the Flyers go Kindrachuk with Kelly. And Don Seleski, Kelly on the near side, tied up by Evans, tries to get out. Boudreaux keeps it in. Warner breaks for the net, tries to dump it in. Does Warner blocked along the near side by Evans. Back to Boudreaux, centering pass from the slot. Deflects to Zaleski, too far up ice for Kindrachuk. Deep into the leaf zone to the right of Wayne Thomas. Grabbed by Pellick, tied up by Bob Kelly. And in comes Boudreaux, 19-25, Warner and 26, Kindrachuk to get a stoppage of play. Well, thus far, the uh, injury to Mike Palmatier and the fact that he's through for the playoffs and the insertion of Wayne Thomas, who's been the backup, has made a little of any difference thus far, Terry. Don, like we said, if Reggie had put those two early ones in, if the skiffs would all be sailors, hit two posts early in the game, puts them behind the eight ball, and then we said, and we, at the expense of repeating myself, reiterating it, penalties have hurt us once again in this game, but our fellows are still in there. It's only a 2-1 game, and we're plugging away, starting to carry it. And with the amount of players they're using, Don, we've mentioned it throughout this series, they're only going with seven or eight players. It's got to start to tell on them eventually. Well, I think he knows that. That's why he's using that young trio line, giving the other two lines breathers. Trying to go with four full now. All right, back to the point. Jimmy Watson has no shot. Rolls it past Finn down behind the leaf net, but Salming reads it. Works away from Kendrachuk. He can't get it out. As his pass hits Dave Newell. Back passes to the point. Bob Daly. Rolling puck. Shot wide of Wayne Thomas's. Daly still not having luck getting on the net. Boutet up, ice to Neely, over the line on the right wing at the top of the circle. 
swept off the stick by Jimmy Watson to the far side to Daly. Runs into Neely, but Ashby back to Turnbull at the point. His shot well wider than that. And it's played by Jimmy Watson up here to Mel Bridgman. Rink wide pass to Kendrachuk at the leap line with Seleski. Gets past Turnbull down on the right wing corner. Goes behind the net. To the near side, he's got Zaleski. Doesn't hit him with a pass. Now back to the far side. He'll go to Daly at the point. Bob winds up with a drive. That catches the stick and deflects out of the rink and will have a face-off just inside the leaf blue line along the far side of the ice to our left. 2-1 Toronto. Ron Finn moves over to the spot about uh, six feet inside the Toronto blue line on the Flyers' right wing as out come the Gunners. Leach is out there along with Lonsbury and Clark in the middle with Tom Bladen and Joe Watson defensively. Flyers lead in games three to two, trying to nail down this quarterfinal round here tonight. And as has been the case throughout most of this series, adversity is the problem right now as they're playing catch up, trailing two to one. Lonsbury, Leach, Clark against Ferguson, McKenney, and Thompson. Tom Bladen winds and curls it around the boards to the near side in the leaf zone. Lonsbury tries to poke it past McKenney. Can't Carlisle in Ferguson and Joe Watson up the slot. Looks for a man to feed to right in front. And he had Dornhofer who runs into Wayne Thomas who pushes him off and the Leafs shoot it out the center ice. Joe Watson drives it back in. Knocked down in front of the Leafs net by the glove of Pellet. Clears up in the far wing. Tom Blayton has it. Loses it at center ice. Hooks it past Thompson into the Leafs zone where it's crossed near side to Randy Carlisle. Up the middle. Had a chance to penetrate but wound it around the boards to the far side of the Flyers zone. McLeish in there. Loses it to Ferguson, who's tied up by Dornhofer. In there is Blayton. It's kicked out to McLeish, to Blayton. Blayton rolls it into the neutral zone. 5.45 left in the second period. 2-1 Leafs. Flyers tied it on an unassisted goal by Clark. And then Lanny McDonald from Sittler and uh, Salming got the Leafs to lead again as up ice. The play by Lonsbury through to McLeish. Deep into the Leafs zone along the near side. Carlisle and McLeish go at it. Dornhofer takes a run at Carlisle. The puck now taken by Ferguson, who's went out by Dornhopper, goes down, sits on the puck. I think Dave Newell will call a stoppage with a face-off from the circle left of Wayne Thomas. We've got 5.21 remaining in the second period here at Maple Leaf Garden. With the score, the Toronto Maple Leafs leading the Philadelphia Flyers 2-1. to one. There's Dorney in front of there again. He's running into Wayne Thomas this time. Just sort of over top of him. Right here, Wayne Thomas gives him a shove to let him know that he's not setting up house in his goal crease tonight at all. But Mr. Real Estate Gary Dornhofer just loves that little lake he built in front there, and he's a past master. Right now, I think that they're overlooking, and if it's the old look-see job, the contact lens again they're looking for. Dorney took a header as he was uh, double-teamed, uh, hit high and low, and dumped on that last foray toward the uh, Toronto net and behind it, and that's what they're looking for right now. Usually in a, in a section like that when they're doing that, doing it, always it's... The guy is the most blind on your team that finds that stupid thing, too, and it's the same shade of ice. He looks down, picks it up, and says, there, do you need this? Feeling around Toronto today, especially from uh, Coach Red Kelly, is that the Leafs are due to win one on their home ice. They have had a miserable home ice record down the stretch during the regular season, and they haven't won one yet here in the playoffs this year. The fans don't particularly like the stoppage in play here for one of our fellows who look for a contact lens, so... I think Dorney has given up now. The referee has called for the faceoff and back into action again, Gene. All right, Settler, Thompson, or uh, Settler, Williams, and McDonald out with Turnbull and Salming, and the Flyers go Leach, Lonsbury, Clark, LaPointe with DuPont to the left of Wayne Thomas. And the Flyers have had some good opportunities, but they've not been able to pepper Thomas as they did Palmatier through most of the game. LaPointe at the point, down to the right wing corner. Short side angle shot, well wide of the net to DuPont near side. Goes back around behind the net, curls it up on the far side to Williams. Now LaPointe goes, tries to go back behind the net, blocked by Turnbull. They jam it up against the far boards in the leaf zone. And just as Sittler dug it out, we get a stoppage. And quickly, the linesman in there to separate Lonsbury from Tiger Williams. The Tiger and uh, Ross Lonsbury uh, taking double takes and glaring looks at one another. Rather surprised when we came in here tonight, Terry. A Maple Leaf sign uh, down in the corner to our right says, Tiger, you're a pussycat. So it would appear as though maybe some of the Leafs fans figure that he's not playing the role that got him there. Well, one thing you can bet he's not going to fish Ross Lonsbury in for a foolish penalty. Ross has been around too many years to let a kid like him do anything foolish to him. Clark and Sittler to the top of the circle to the left of Wayne Thomas. Kicks to the near side. Lonsbury, weak shot wide of the net from 20 feet as he didn't have much mustard on the backhander. And it's Turnbull looking up ice of the Leafs breaking, and he's got his man too far for Williams. That'll be an icing as it's caught up to by Jimmy Watson, carrying out in front of Wayne Stevenson to our right. 
Speaking about Ross Lonsbury, he uh, just in time noticed McDonald breaking up the right wing. The lead pass went to Sittler, but Ross uh, quickly uh, made up the ground and covered uh, McDonald as he did so well on uh, in game five. Carol Wayne's right there. Wayne Thomas on your left, Wayne Stevenson on your right. 12 and 14 shots, respectively. Well, the Flyers have only had five through 15 minutes of this period. Like I say, they've been averaging 39, but not this time. There's a play out, kept in smartly by Daly, but to no control for Philadelphia. And they dump it out. Here comes Sittler, putting pressure on the Philadelphia defense. He'll drive one on Stevenson from the blue line. Routine save, cleared up to Jimmy Watson, and he pokes it past Sounding, past Turnbull, the length of the ice. Racing after it is Thomas to take it away from Reg Leach. Clear, but not out of hops over Clark stick. The Daly along that right wing boards, right in front. The Daly, shot, score! As the Leafs pop it up again, and the count counts. And guess who sets it up again? Mr. Double C, Captain Clark. And Bobby Daly gets his second goal of the playoffs to go along with six assists, as he is now tied Rick McLeish for the team leadership in total points. Nice play by Bobby Clark to find Count Daly right in the slot by himself. He comes in with a quick wrist shot, as you said, Don, right through the five hole of Wayne Thomas. Look at Captain Bobby Clark on the far right wing. Just threads it right through. Ross Lonsbury hits the net to create the diversion. The Count walks in and just puts a good wrist shot, a quick wrist shot. Tie this game up at 2-2. 4.24 remaining in the second period. One goal, two goals. Ah, ah, ah. All right, down behind the net, touched up by Clayton, gives it away behind the net. They try to center it, does Bruce Boudreau, as out that Evans and Warner. I'll tell you, Terry, when this line gets a little more experienced, they're going to add some real moxie to this Leaf club in future years. Here comes Clayton up ice. Throw to Bridgman, he's over the line past Carlisle. Couldn't make the break in on the net. And the puck rolls to Wayne Thomas. Tries to get past Bridgman, who keeps it in, pokes it past Carlisle, cuts inside him, tries to go behind the Leaf nut, skate it off. And now it's Bob Warner trying to tie it up. Tries to tie it up again. Wraps it around to the far side. And there is Evans to work it out smartly. Here comes Boudreau. He's over the line. 50-footer. And Stevenson is safe. Boudreau in front again. Couldn't find the handle. As they left him uncovered on that far side, here comes Selesky breaking up two on two with Bridgman. The bird over the line. Past Pellick. Angle shot. Past Stephen uh, Wayne Thomas. And here come the Leafs. And we're going to get penalties on both sides. I think Bridgman is going off with Carlisle. And they're eyeball to eyeball right down below us at the Toronto Blue Line. All of this coming at 1636. Just exactly a minute after the Flyers had tied this game. It'll be Bridgman for the Flyers, Carlisle for the Leafs. Bob Daly uh, scoring the game tire as it stands right now. Clark getting the lone assist. As we said, Daly now is tied with McLeish for most total points for the Flyers in the playoffs. Jim Watson, they were uh, naming Jim Watson, but I think it should be Bridgman. It's Bridgman for cross-checking. And Carlisle gets slashing. They continue to announce Jim Watson, but it's number 10, Mel Bridgman, and he's in the Flyers' box directly down below us. So both teams will play a man short, barring anything additional for the next two minutes of play. There's 3.24 left in middle period action. There's an eyeball-eyeball look with leap defenseman Mike Pellick and Carlisle and Bridgman as they correct the scoring at 16.36. Flyers have trailed twice and have tied twice. Ashby out there along with Salming, Neely, and Turnbull. McLeish back to the point. Daly through a screen wide. Back to the near side. Leach on the backhander has to go behind the net to McLeish. Tied up by uh, Turnbull. Tripped up. Out comes Salming with the puck. Lifts to Ashby along his own right wing. Cuts through the slot. Up ice to Turnbull. He'll try to rush it through. Now here comes Ashby. Ashby almost had the break of the Flyers. Leach and McLeish two on one. Over the line with McLeish. Going right in on. He tried to fake the shot and then lost it off a stick. And here comes Salming. He'll go all the way. Watch out. Over the line against DuPont. Cuts to the inside. Centering pass. He shot in front. Ashby tried to get it on the rebound, but it turned into the side of the goal post. And Stevenson sat on it. And DuPont making sure as he drives Neely away from in front of Wayne Stevenson. Stevenson finally corralling that rebound around uh, the net to his left and slapping the glove hand on it. 
Salming's always dangerous when he rushes the puck across that blue line, and several Leafs observers have said that the Leafs are only dangerous when he does that. Uh, and, and normally that is the case because Salming can control the tempo of a game when he penetrates the defensive zone. Faceoff will be in the circle to the left of Stevenson. We're down to 2.48 left in the middle period. Red Kelly checks the clock. Fred Sherrill looks down at his shoes. The only reason I can think Salming hasn't done that more, realizing he's going to have to go 40 minutes a game, he's got to conserve. Down behind the net, Jimmy Watson swings past Ferguson, up on the center ice area to Clark, can handle it, and it's slapped back in by Errol Thompson alongside Stevenson's left. Thompson chases Bladen, it comes out in front of his net, passes off Clark's skate. Thompson tried to keep it in with a hook check, but Clark back at center, over the line, sweep check by Salming, and the Flyers quickly drop back as Thompson up ice, lets it go to Tracy Pat up the middle, fires it wide of Stevenson, rebound comes out to the near circle, and here comes Jimmy Watson. Past McKenney at center ice, he'll challenge Salming at the leaf line along the near wing holes. Salming takes it right off his stick, and you just can't get close to him with that long, angular reach. Back to the Flyers line. Played past Tiger Williams, Clark can't control. The Leafs penetrate. Tiger Williams fires it off Stevenson's stick behind the Philadelphia net. Here it comes up to Billy Barber smartly from Jimmy Watson as he stick handles the center by himself. Rolls it through past Salming as the Flyers make a complete unit change, bringing out DuPont with Daly. They've got uh, Kimberchuk out there with Lonsbury. They're still playing five aside. Salming at the flyer line offside as he cut and crisscrossed with Williams who went in up the slot about a half stride too quickly. And Williams made the mistake of getting behind Bob Daly. And once he was in that zone, there's no way in the world that Daly was going to let him out. And that's what's forced the offside call. Faceoff will be outside the flyer's line on their right wing as Sittler is back on for the Leafs. He'll draw against Oris Kindrichuk. 18 seconds left from the dual minors to Bridgman and to Carlisle. There's a guy that scored five goals in the game against Detroit. Ian Turnbull and Orr never got four in a game. Don't forget Terry Crisp will be downstairs and right after the intermission begins, he'll be talking to checker Ross Lonsbury before we come back here for the wrap up and our guest as intermission activities will continue. At center ice, Sittler with McDonald and Turnbull with Salming against Daly with DuPont and the Flyers go Kindrichuk with Lonsbury. 12 seconds left and we'll get Carlisle back with Bridgman as up ice comes Sittler. He'll challenge the Flyers along the near side, tries to get past Kindrichuk, the Salming back to Sittler. He'll get it right, wide to the short side using DuPont as a screen. McDonald back to the point. Into the corner, right out here comes Salming. Bridgman tried to read the play and dies as Stevenson pokes it off the far side. The puck rolled just a little off the stick of Salming toward the slot and he couldn't reach it. Here comes Daly back up ice, past Sittler. Doesn't want to tangle with McDonald. Dumps it to the open near wing where it's blocked down by the Salming again. Played on a slapper by DuPont. The length of the ice rolls behind the leap goal line. And that's what the call will be as we enter the last minute of the play in this period. Deadlocked at two. Boston will uh, attempt to wrap up their quarterfinal series against the Los Angeles Kings. That game in the forum on the coast later tonight. Due to start at 11 p.m. Eastern time bringing the puck deep on the Flyers' zone, and a few of the Flyers having a few words with a few of the Leafs. Williams uh, joined with Jim Watson right now, as the Flyers now have out there Clark, Farber, Dornhofer. Now they're going to make a change. As Sittler now heads for the Leafs bench. The musically appropriate organist is playing the Minute Waltz by Chopin. And it just ended. So I guess we've had fooling around for a minute. We've got 57 seconds remaining in the period, Don, and uh, it's a grinder. As every one of them has been thus far, especially those in this building. But the uh, real pressure has to be on the lease now. They've got to win, and they've got the young kids out there again. 25 Warner, 19 Boudreau, 16 Evans. The Flyers go Clark, along with Barber and McLeish. Back to the point. Carlisle has trouble with it. Have no shot. Tries to get it in. Clark knocks it down and up to McLeish along the left wing. Comes with Barber over the red line. Dumps but right into Carlisle's midsection and he clears as it drops to his feet. Joe Watson from center ice in on Thomas who gloves it with 40 seconds left in the period. Lays it off behind the net for Evans and up ice to Boudreaux. He's on side. He'll get a shot from the left wing circle. Hit the post on the outside, near side. There's the youngsters at two. There comes Clark on a break. Over the line, a drive on Thomas.
Thomas hit the post on the outside. Buys the center. Well, how about that? Post short side, post long side at both ends of the rink as we get a stoppage to the right of Thomas. With 17 seconds left in the period, still tied at two. And this is exactly why they call this game of professional hockey a game of inches. You might even pare it down to fractions of inches as you had post shots at either end of the ice. This one, the second of two in a row by Bobby Clark as it clicked this one off the outside of the near side goal post. Seconds earlier, it was Boudreaux catching just a shade of the Flyers goal post long side back at the uh, Flyers end of the ice. 17 seconds is all that remains here in the middle period of play. Ferguson, McKenney, Thompson, Turnbull, and Salming. McLeish, Leach, Clark, DuPont, and Daly. The Flyers literally have a power play unit out there looking for the draw and a big break in these final 17 seconds. All right, now Ron Finn has stopped as McLeish behind him and uh, Salming penetrated the circle to the right of Thomas Drop, and we get another stoppage by Dave Newell, who will thus come from the far side to the near corner to check that a little bit more closely. The weather in Toronto uh, upon arrival yesterday and again today has been very humid. It's extremely humid up here. I've got to figure it's much the same down there. Clark talking with Ron Finn and now it'll be Clark and Ferguson again to the right of Wayne Thomas. 16 seconds left in the period. And now I think they're going to be dumped out. Ferguson is. And so is Clark. And it'll be a McKinney against McLeish. Ron Finn said you weren't set right. There it is. Back near side to DuPont, and it hit him along the boards into center ice. DuPont turns up ice, over skates as he's checked by McKinney. McLeish caroms a pass to himself off the right wing boards, rolls it in the leaf zone with five seconds left. Salming tries to lift it out. McLeish has it in the offensive right wing corner as the bell goes. Blend the second period with the score. The Philadelphia Flyers, two, and the Toronto Maple Leafs, two. Back down here outside the Flyers restroom, my second intermission guest, Ross Lonsbury, number 18, and every time Gene Harder Don Earl says, Terry, about Ross Lonsbury, he said, don't give us the same cliche you give us every time, I say. He's an honest two-way hockey player, goes up and down, and wins it in the corners for you. Ross, my estimation of you. First and most obvious question, Ross, because you've been given the duty of this whole series of checking one of the most dangerous guys in the playoffs, Lanny McDonald. Any special adjustment you've got to do to keep an eye on him, Rabbit? Well, I think just, just the fact that he's, he's such a strong hockey player that you have to be with him every you know every little bit of time you know if you, if you give him any any time at all in front of the net he's, he's going to put it in obviously tonight he got uh, I think only one good chance to score and he put it in the net I didn't see what had happened I had my back to the play uh, the last game in here he scored four goals so very obvious you can't give him very much room or he's going to put it in the net a good hockey player himself and a good man checking for us all year long you play with Dorney Ricky McLeish on a line in the playoffs Freddie asked you to jump onto a line with Bobby Clark Reggie Leach that's a whole new adjustment plus the pressures of playoffs what adjustments do you have to make playing with Reggie and Clarkey? Well, Clarkey, as we all know, is a completely different type of hockey player than Ricky is. Uh, Ricky will take the puck and go in down, and, and uh, you can pick up a lot of rebounds with Ricky. Whereas with, with Bobby, you've got to be ready for that puck all the time because he's throwing it around and moving it. And, and uh, with Reggie on the right side, you know pretty well that if it goes over there, it's very seldom it's going to come back across the ice. It's going to be on the net or in the net, and, and you have to be aware of, of maybe a long rebound coming out. So you, you have to play a little more defensive, I think, with... I really don't know Reggie and Bobby that well, you know, and so it's, you know, I'll, I'll stay back and watch McDonald be happy years. with that. <laughs> Doing a super job, Alani, anyways, and that's what we want you for. Roscoe, we've said it numerous times in our intermissions and whatnot, the penalties, they've got to be wearing down our fellas. You guys have killed them out there. You kill penalties yourself. You go on power plays. You go on regular shift. And tonight we mentioned before we just come on the air that it's awful humid and warm out there. Are they going to take their toll on us, or are we wearing down the Leafs with being as how they're only using seven to eight players? I think that it's, it's working in reverse. I, I feel that killing penalties is a heck of a lot easier than working a power play because you have to work the whole ice on a power play, whereas killing penalties, you come back, uh, you work more or less blue line to blue line. Uh, killing penalties isn't an easy job. I shouldn't make it sound like that. <laughs> but on the power play, you have to go corner to corner, end to end, and there's a lot of pushing and shoving in front of the net, and I think that it's taking the toll on them more so than us. It's by no means an easy job, Rabbit. You guys have done a good job. Tremendous job on Lanny McDonald. Keep it up. Roscoe, thanks for joining us, giving us your views of the game. Back in and join the fellas. And right now, upstairs to Gondola and back to Gene Hart. When we have a 2-2 score, the Flyers tied it at 4-10. Clark in the slot intercepting. Backhand shot blocked by Salmon. Got the rebound. Hitting the post to the right of Wayne Thomas for his third playoff goal unassisted. But moments later, at 17-17, it was McDonald's ninth goal to give him the overall playoff series lead in the NHL. 
from Sittler and Salming right up the slot, driving it under the pad and skate and glove of Wayne Thomas. But the Flyers got it back and they kept plugging. Finally, at 15.36, Clark picking off the pass along the right wing boards into the slot to the trailing daily. And he had eyeball to eyeball shooting range at Wayne Thomas and beat him for his second playoff goal to tie Rick McLeish in points for the Flyer leadership overall. The penalties even at two apiece in that period. So the Flyers have six of the games at nine. The shots 10 to 9, Philadelphia, they're tied at 17 all. 2 2 as we await the third period, and our intermission activities will continue after this. Here at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, after two periods of play, the score is tied at 2, and our guest is former Flyers goaltender, now a telecaster with the Flyers Prism Cable TV outlet, Bobby Taylor. Chief, uh, now you know what it's like to go through not working in a pressure game like this one up here in Toronto in a hot building. You're warm, we're all warm, and uh, he told me that he still got butterflies, so you never take the hockey out of a hockey player. What uh, what are you feeling right now as we head into the third period? Well, Don, I was watching the Toronto uh, players, and I've been watching their faces, and, and they look like a beaten hockey club to me. They don't have the zest, they don't have the confidence like they had in the first four games, and it's, it's something that you can just see it. I know the guys on the bench are sensing it, and of course, I'm right down beside them, and it's like old times. I keep wanting to reach over and open that gate for them, and I'm yelling and screaming at them, and it's, it's just like old times, and I think that's why I'm so nervous. It's, you know, I feel like I should have that old number 30 back on. Well, uh, you probably have it indelibly uh, on your back. Crispy, who's working with us in our booth, same thing, sweaty palms, uh, butterflies in his stomach. Of course, we're sweating simply because it's so darn humid in this building. As a matter of fact, when we came into the building, before they even put the lights on, there was a heavy layer of fog down below, which kind of indicates how warm this building really is. And of course, uh, when you've got heat, it does affect members of both clubs, and it's a question then of stamina. The Flyers going with more personnel should wear them down. Oh, definitely. You know, and this is, you know, what Freddie talks about is character, and I think this is what he means by character, is when, when it really gets hot out there and every stride, every move hurts, and you just keep going. A good team with character will keep going. They'll play over that pain, that agony of that heat, the agony of fatigue. They'll play over it and they'll play through it, and, and this is exactly what the Flyers have done, and they're doing it now. And I think, you know, uh, barring any uh, real penalties uh, spree by the Flyers, I think they're going to dominate them in the third period. Of course, that's one thing the Flyers have got to stay away from because uh, that load uh, that they carried in the first period, especially that five-minute job, had to, uh, to run them down quite a bit. Oh, definitely, but the big thing about it was that uh, I don't think they had any shots on Wayne Stevenson in that five minutes, and then right after it, the two minutes, and it was actually a, a mental error uh, on the part of the Flyers by not putting a, a man in the box, but it's really uh, funny that usually a, a referee will make them get a, a man in there. Okay, we'll talk more hockey with former Flyers goaltender, now TV cast with Prism Cable TV, Bobby Taylor, right after this timeout. Goaltender Bob Taylor. And Bob, one very quick question and a quick answer if you can. You're not playing hockey now. You're seeing it through the eyes of a television camera and a microphone. What are your feelings and thoughts of the transition? It's tough, Don. It's a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. It's more of a mental thing than it is physically, but boy, you're worn out just as much after a broadcast. Well, almost as much as you do when you're after a game, believe me. It's a mental pressure and not a physical pressure, that's for sure. Um, what about the series as uh, it's gone thus far? You were witness to that 6-5 to five win. Uh, we are running out of time. I'd like to uh, slide this in right now. I had a chance to talk to former Bruins Bobby Orr, who's in the Toronto General, uh, had a knee surgery two days ago, and he says to tell Barry Ashby, hey, keep checking, okay? Bob Taylor, for being our guest, these gifts for you. To help you follow the flyer lineup and point out LaPointe, DuPont, Kelly, Seleski, Dornhofer, Joe Watson, no points, and even Ross Lonsbury only has one, and Mel Bridgman won. So in a sense, while the Leafs are supposed to be a six-man club, the flyer scoring is being done by a very select group. Gene, anytime you go down your lineup in playoffs, it's a whole brand new ball game. A lot of fellows have different roles to play. I talked with Ross Lonsbury, if you heard the interview. His role was mainly to keep Lanny McDonald in check, and that's quite a feat all in itself. As for the other, other fellows, Gene, you take into consideration a lot their ice time, uh, the different situations in the game, what they're asked to do, and uh, hopefully that it just sort of all will balance out in the long run. I'd like to advise you again of a major news that if the Flyers play home Sunday night, regardless of the opponent, either the end of this series or the opener of a semifinal set, the game will be at 8 o'clock, not the usual Sunday night at 7, but at 8, and you will see it and hear it on WTAF-TV Channel 29 and WCAU Radio. All right, the Flyers have returned, and Wayne Thomas has done a job on the other end as 
he was left hung on both of the flyer goals with Clark and then Daly right in the slot. And uh, those two guys, you just can't leave there. Gene, you mentioned Wayne Thomas, and they were saying up here in the papers and the people talking around the city of Toronto that what will he do? How will he uh, react coming into this? Paul Matier was so hot. Can Thomas keep it up? The thing I think that most people forget is that Wayne Thomas would not be in the NHL if he was not capable of being here. If he didn't have the ability to stay up here. Uh, talking with the people that know here, and there's a couple of the usherettes that usher you back and forth down in through there, and they're blue and white and little maple leaves all over them. The people here know that Wayne Thomas has been hot and cold all year. Gene, he's turned in some fine performance, and then, as they say, like a lot of goaltenders, he'll go cold for a while. I think tonight they're hoping that they get him into one of his hot stretches. Looks like if he is vulnerable, it's high because he likes to do that tight and knee bend with the skates going out to either corner and trying to protect low and the, the center of the net. But Selesky once, Clark once, and Daly once seem to have it measured high. Remember the bird in the second period and shot over the top of the net when he appeared to have shooting room high. It never fails, Gene, when you do your scouting reports on different goaltenders around the league and you say one fellow's weak on his glove side, one is weak here and there. They'll fool you and, and beat you every time where you're aiming it. And right there, Ian Turnbull is also having himself a win of a playoff series and has really come into his own this year with those five goals he scored against Detroit one night. And he has been a real plus for them here. There's, there's the one that makes me chuckle right there, Don. Check, check, and that last check is what it's all about when you work. You don't get the last one without the first two. Hound Kelly says, no checky on the ice, no checky in the hand. <laughs> all right, now, Paul Holmgren, of course, was lost to the Flyers in the first period in a game misconduct, so they're short a winger on the bench. Shots at 17, Flyers have six of the game, nine penalties, 2-2 two -two the score. This could be it. Third period action, Park against Sittler. Let's go, Flyers. Let's go, Don Earl. Thank you, Gene, and I hope you don't have to use those track shoes tonight. Well, I got a balloon to bring me back up tonight. <laughs> One balloon to another. Okay, it's going to be Clark against Sittler at center ice. Flyers defending the goal to our left, the Leafs to the right. Referee Dave Newell drops the puck, and it's controlled by the Flyers. Lonsbury circles around Sittler, cuts to the right, lifts it through the legs of Turnbull to the right wing corner. Salming winds it around the far side, takes a crazy carom, but right on the stick of Sittler, who gets it back to center ice. Leach taps it back to the Flyers line for Daly, goes wing to wing, intercepted by a sliding Salming, deflects it to McDonald the drive, stopped by Stevenson, drops it off for Jim Watson around the near side. Leach has to come back for it. He gets back to Turnbull the drive, stopped in front, bounces over the net, a backhander by Sittler. That was close. Now it's Bob Daly trying to move it out. He's going to ice it and does to lift the pressure at the Flyers end of the ice. That's up by Salming, and icing is the call. Just an instinct, Terry. Why should Turnbull risk the stick high in the air at center ice to try to club that one down when all it would do would be to break up a play? That's a natural reflect on that play. Right there is Daryl Sittler. He backhands it. Jimmy Watson checking him. Deflected up and over the net. It lands on the back of the net and goes harmlessly into the corner, so no damage done. Uh, as I mentioned, back to Turnbull waving the stick at that high in the air. It's just sort of a, a natural reflex to do it, Gene, when it's going by you. Now it's McLeish against Ferguson to the right of Stevenson. Flyers can't control as Dornhofer tried to move it out. Now it's McLeish back with it. Goes behind the flyer net to the far corner on the left wing side. Just lifts it to center ice. Tracked down by Pellick inside of his own zone. Dumps it back deep in the flyer zone, but icing is waved up. It'll be Joe Watson on it. Winds it quickly around to McLeish on the left wing. Blocked off by McKinney. Watson again. Hits McLeish on the left wing. Gets the pass off to Barber and he's out to center. Right wing pass, Dornhopper winds up. The drive goes wide, short side. Caroms all the way back to center ice on the far wing. McLeish in a foot race for the puck along with Ferguson. They both overskate. Finally picked up by Bladen. Bladen out of his own end. The center ice tries to hit Dornhopper, cutting off the right wing. Bladen dumps it down the right wing boards. Thomas leaves it for Carlisle. The rookie defenseman off the, his own right wing to McKinney at center. McKinney wing to wing picked off by Dornhopper. Dorney drops it back to Joe Watson defensively on the left side. Tried to go right side at center for McLeish. Picked off by Thompson. Caroms back to center ice where it's McKinney. Lifts it to the Flyers right wing corner across the way as the Leafs want a line change and get it. Quickly it's Joe Watson out of his own zone against the tight checking of Don Ashby. McLeish wants off so he dumps it to the Toronto backboard. Thomas near side for Bob Neely. Neely up his own left wing to Ashby at center. He has 
Boutet wide open across the Flyers line. Carries it to the backboard. DuPont takes a bump from Boutet. They battle for that loose puck. Ashby, DuPont, and now it's Bridgman. Broken up by Salmi. And now it's Kinderchuk behind his own net. Started out right side, pulled up short, and went back to the left. Just clears the zone with a puck back to the Toronto end. Turnbull will take it and set it up behind his own net. Score tied 2-2, third period. Quick outlet pass to Ashby, broken up by LaPointe. LaPointe dumps it inside the zone. Here's Kinderchuk right face off circle. Short side, it's wide. Karen's back to the left point. DuPont keeps it in, but here it's picked up by Salming. We have a two-on-one with Neely. Salming on the back counter. It's wide out the long side. And Karen's quickly up to the right wing at center. Kinderchuk across the Toronto line to Seleski. Back in front, intended for Bridgman. Picked up by Jim Watson. Oh, loose in front. Now it's Seleski in the right wing corner. He skated off by Salming, and it's Neely. Neely cuts inside Bridgman, straight up the middle. Now we have a three-on-two. Neely with Ashby open on the left wing. To Ashby, he's broken up by Bob Daly in a good sweep check. Daly carries to center ice. Cuts to the middle, out of the right side. Weak shot and offside still in the zone with Bobby Clark. We have 16.34 to go in regulation time with the score, the Flyers 2 and Toronto 2. Evans and Paul Boudreau. Face off midway between center ice and the Toronto line. Kinderchuk against Boudreau, and it's the Leafs controlling. Pellick in his own zone, crosses right side to Karloff, to Boudreau at center, gets by Jim Watson. Watson's going to be going off, and it's going to be uh, on the delay, finally called, and it's going to be, well, it's going to be holding. So uh, the flyer is shorthanded for the next two minutes of play. Well, that was an error of... Real commission as Boudreau beat Jimmy, who grabbed him from the left side. Boudreau made a nice move at Jimmy Watson, just inside the blue line. Got around him. Jimmy not taking any chance. He wasn't sure if there was anybody back checking or not, or who was between number 19, Boudreau, and the net. Reached out, put the clamp on him, and just sort of spun him around and down. So Jimmy's off for holding now with 16.24 remaining in the third period. All right, that's for holding at 326. The Flyers' seventh penalty of 10 call by Dave Newell. And the Leafs are a one for four on the power play. Get a fifth. Score tied at two. And it's going to be Sippler between Williams and McDonald up front. And who guess? Turnbull and Salming at the point. Just inside the Flyers line. It hops over the glass and out of play across the way. Right to the right of backup goaltender Bernie Perron. And for Jimmy Watson is his first penalty of the playoff series. Clark and Lonsbury, the penalty killers on for the Flyers. Flyers control as Clark taps it back to Daly, who lifts it the length of the ice, wide of Thomas to his right. He sets it up for Turnbull, who comes back and sets up behind his own net. Turnbull right in front of Thomas, goes right side for a breaking line of McDonald, but picked off by Lonsbury and dumped back in, but right on the stick of Salmi. Salmi cuts left side, blocked off by Clark at the line. They battle for it. Now Sittler inside the line, and he's offside. Terry, another point. We talked about Sittler and, and trailing by McDonald, breaking down the right wing. I noticed on the power play, they like to just get him a strike, a step over the blue line on the left wing, and he holds there and then sets up the play. Sittler can find McDonald usually in the slot or trailing behind him, Indian file. Face off control by the Leafs. Salming at the red line. Fires to the Flyers' right wing corner board. Karam's behind the net. DuPont, around the near side, kept in by Turnbull. Now it's Daly with a stick on it, and he lifts it the length of the ice. The corner across the way, picked up by Salming. 1.15 left on Jim Watson's penalty. Salming goes to McDonald on the right. Drops it back for Salming as she scoots through center ice. Back on the right to Sittler. Sittler gets by Clark along the board. Daly back on it. Intercepted by Tiger Williams. Centering pass, Karam back to Salming. Left side for Turnbull. The drive deflected wide and Clark will take it off the board. Clark to center ice to Lonsbury. Lonsbury oh. gives the puck away to McDonald. Back into the fly zone. He's crunched by Daly. Clark takes McDonald to the left wing corner. Daly clears the length of the ice. I think Lonsbury was probably among the most surprised in the building when he looked up and saw the Leafs. Here's Tiger Williams across the line. Drops for Sittler. Right side. McDonald. The drive scores. And the Leafs take the 3 2 lead on their second. Well, there's that power play again, Terry, and that was a lovely setup. And not in the slot that time, but from the right wing circle, and it looked like we went right through Wayne's pads. Just be sort of monotonous after a while. Gina keeps saying, 
go by Lanny McDonald, but that's just the way it just keeps happening. He was away over at the faceoff dot almost. Passed by Sittler, found him all alone. Lanny McDonald's almost the Sittler away on the bad side. Just put it right on the far side of Wayne Stevenson, halfway up, and Steph never moved in that at all, so I'm not sure if he saw it or if he was blocked by Joey or what, but he caught him moving. Left with Lanny McDonald. Steph moved sort of to the right, and Lanny McDonald just to come between him and the post. So Lanny McDonald's 10th playoff goal gives the Leafs a 3-2 lead with 14.54 remaining in the third period. Well, uh, Settler, go ahead, Don. I was just going to say, Darrell Settler has assisted on all three Toronto goals. He now has 21 playoff points, just six shy of the record. Off the faceoff, as both teams are now back full, it's Joe Watson from behind his own net. He's up to center right. All flyers up, and it's lifted to the right wing corner, goes behind the net. Thomas reverses it, gets it back as Dornhofer is hit hard by Mike Pellick as the pace of the game starts picking up. Pellick goes down, the puck is beneath him. Barber digs it loose for McLeish. McLeish back to Bladen at the right point. He drives through a screen, blocked short side by Thomas. Dornhofer kept on the doorstep, and the puck is cleared over the glass in the near corner to our right and out of play. Remember this. Uh Settler came into this playoff series with 10 points. He now has 21, so he has 11 in six games, less than six games. So he's just picking him up at two per game, and uh, you got to keep him under wraps. They did third Tuesday. They have not tonight, and there, Terry, one step over the line on the left wing inside the blue line, setting up the play to McDonald, as we called. Clarkie called him the best center in hockey right now, and he is living up to Clarkie's prediction, I'll tell you. Ferguson and McLeish on the faceoff. Leaves control. Pellick sets up behind his own net to our right. Flyers again for the third time in the game face a catch-up situation. Quickly pass at center ice. Picked off by Blade. And then back comes Dornhopper. Across the line comes Dorney. To McLeish on the right. Can't get a shot away. To Barber. To the right-wing corner for McLeish. Double teamed and broken up. And here comes Ferguson. Ferguson to center ice. Goes right side for McKinney. And offside is Ferguson as he went in before the puck. 13.51 to go in the third period. It's Toronto 3 and Philadelphia 1. Close friend. Back here at Maple Leaf Gardens, we have 13.51 remaining in regulation, and the story is the same. The Flyers here at the Garden trailing in the third period by one. 3-2 the score as the Flyers gain the control of the faceoff. Daly quickly out of his own zone to Kindrachuk at center. Lifts it to the left wing corner of the Toronto zone. Down goes Bridgman. Quickly hops back up again. Picked up by Salming. Lifts it ahead to Neely. Neely out of his own zone on the right side. Lead pass for Boutet across the line. Ashby would have been offside, but the Leafs get the puck right back again. Turnbull. Throw it. Heavy screen across the line on the right. His shot is deflected to the backboard. Daly gets his stick on it. Broken up. Ashby. Can't control it. Now it's picked up along the near side by Jim Watson. Watson to center right. Drives it to the Toronto left wing corner. Sounding takes Jim Watson out of the play as Thomas clears it out of harm's way. Now it's booted up the left side for Bob Neely. Neely out of his own zone to center right. As Ashby goes in behind Daly. Here comes Ashby. Off the outside of the goal post. Centering pass. Cleared ahead quickly for Horace Kinderchuk. Kinderchuk looks back. See Bridgman coming in. Kinderchuk right face off circle. Tries to go back to Bridgman. Bridgman digs it out of the corner. Back to the point. First screen deflected uh, all the way through. We've got a delay penalty coming up. And it's against Toronto. Mike Pellick foot tripping. Well, that's the second time on this shift that uh, Bridgman was pulled down. And finally, the Flyers get a penalty. 12-39 remaining the third period. The score, Toronto 3 and the Flyers 2. Back here at Maple Leaf Gardens, Pellick the penalty for tripping Bridgman in front of the Leaf net. Mel Bridgman, Bridgman was heading for the front of the net, trying to set up a screen. Some kind of confusion in front of Thomas, and Pellick just took the stick and just swiped the feet right up from under him. And referee Newell finally saw that one, as you said earlier, Gene. Mel had been pulled down as he was breaking towards the net on the far side on the same shift. So we'll get a chance now to get this game tied up for the two-minute power play. All right, now, the... Flyers are 4 for 19 on the power play, and the Leafs 10 for 31, and now we're going to get a measurement of Wayne Stevenson's stick, I believe, or glove. No? Well, we thought that's what the Leafs were going to imply. Now Daryl Sittler's going over, and we can only surmise what that's all about. Sittler's still drawing with Dave Newell. Now Dave is going to come over and signal face-off. 
Now we're going to measure the count stick. You see, the captain has to make the claim. Well, let's see if the Flyers are going to get burned when they had a chance at a power play to see if the count daily stick is illegal. They're going to measure the length as the tape measure is there now. And let's see if the Flyers, as they say in Hamlet, are hung on their own petard. I asked the count. It, uh, the maximum you're allowed is 55 inches, and the count is legal. I asked him once. I said, is your stick legal? He said, yes. He said, it's a full 55 inches and no more. Well, they're down there. The Neil Armstrong don't make a member out of me. Neil Armstrong holding, and Dave Newell is holding, and he's talking to Bobby Clark. Let's see what they do with it. They give it back to the count. So as the Flyers were her earlier against Palmatier, the Leafs are $200 poor, but maybe a minute fresher. Face off in the Leaf van and the Flyers uh, can't count on forever on last minute heroics and they trail 3-2. And again, their power play or the absence of it has been the difference. The Leafs continue to hang in there. Lead games are stay tough. 10 for 31, one every three. The Flyers are one every five, just four and 19. Flyers will go with Clark. McLeish and Leach up front. Barber and Daly at the points. It's going to be Ferguson. Thompson, the penalty killers with Salming and Turnbull defensively. Face off top of the far circle to our right. To the right of Thomas. Back to the left point. Barber. A rolling puck. Barber gets it flat. Looks. Takes the shot. Right point. Daly. Right face off circle. McLeish. Back to Daly. Left point. Barber. Holds. Back to Daly. Takes the drive. Routine oh, and score! Geez. Rick McLeish on the rebound and the Flyers come back again to try it at three. All right, Terry, I know you're going to disagree with me, but poor clearance by Thomas putting it right where he didn't want it for McLeish who found short side. You're right, Gene, I am going to disagree with you. Thomas did the only thing he could do on the count shot. He kicked it straight out where he had no choice. When the count's got that puck coming at you, Turnbull's right there. He misses the puck when it's coming. Ricky McLeish does not miss it. He's standing to the right of the net. Ricky doesn't hesitate at all. Thomas has got all he can do to stop the count shot to begin with. Turnbull missed it, and Ricky made no mistake standing to the right of the net. He was cruising in towards the net to try and pick that rebound up. He did. And a good shot low on the ice to beat Thomas on the glove side low. Number four from Daly and uh, Barber. And for the Flyers, their fifth power play goal as DuPont has it behind his own net. Quickly up on the right. Picked out by Evans. His drive wide as he was looking for that far corner. And it caroms all the way back to the Toronto backboard. Carlisle runs it down. Fourth checking and breaking him up is Kendrachuk. Kendrachuk can't make a play on it as he fell down. Kelly breaks up Boudreaux. Back to Bladen. His drive. Cutting right in front was Kendrachuk. And hopping on top of him was I Randy Carlisle. I think he got hit with that shot. He appears to be in pain in the leaf crease. And quickly... They're signaling Neil Armstrong to the Flyers therapist. Matt DePaulo is being hustled out by Billy Barber as Rick McLeish, who just tied the game, looks on from the Flyer bench. I'm oh. sure that O tripped up in front and probably took that in the groin or high in the thigh. He was heading for the front of the net. And right now, Don Seleski is having some words, I believe, with goaltender Wayne Thomas. Carlisle is the one looking at him and trying to get in between, but... I think possibly Bird thinks that Thomas took a jab at Owen Kindrichuk. He is not moving too far. He, I think the puck, as you mentioned, Gene, did get him. He went to the front of the net, trying to set up a screen. Our shot from the point possibly connected with O somewhere. He's holding his midsection, so possibly the puck got him in the midsection. Hopefully he won't be hurt too bad. He'll be back up and in the game. Well, we're going to try and see if we can't reconstruct that one. Tommy Bladen has the puck. Oh, he's heading right there. Carlisle's got him. Carlisle just puts a good trip right on him, and there it's coming right there. So, oh, he's either got the puck in the side of the net or down around the chest, it looked like. Good heavens as we see it again. Uh, no interference. Hook trip. News all day, every day on your Total News and Information Station, WCAU CBS Radio News 1210. Take 1210 with you wherever you go and stay on top of the late-breaking news events. Worldwide, nationwide, Delaware Valley-wide, when you need news, WCAU Radio News 1210 is there. So well, Kendra Chuck is back up and moving, Gene, so good sign, good news for us. With a 3-3 game in progress, we can use Oh, and his puck control out there as often as we can get him there. Score is 3-3 with 11.54 remaining in regulation, and Lanny McDonald has six of the last eight goals for the Leafs in this building. Leach had an installment hat trick going coming into tonight's game, as we mentioned earlier, but uh, that chain was broken by first Clark, then Daly and then McLeish. But you can bet your bottom dollar that the rifle still has that
Cannon cut. Okay, face off to the left of Thomas. Controlled by the Leafs. Just lifted back to the flyer zone by Bob Neely. Running it down along the near side is Bladen. Lifting it ahead. Intercepted by Neely. His drive is way off the mark. Selesky retrieves the rebound on the left wing. Moves it ahead to center for Bridge, uh, Bridgman. Bridgman lifts it over the head of everyone. And it's gloved by Thomas. Thomas bumps out to the ice by Selesky. And they're going to give Selesky a penalty. It's going to be for charging Wayne Thomas. How can you charge the man who's got the puck, Terry, when you're he, making a play on him? You're right, Gene. He's fair game any time he goes out of that crease, and especially when he's handling the puck. John Trusty had every right to check him. Carl Allen, Kimberchuk are missing it up. John Trusty heading for the penalty box on a call by referee Dave Newell. And so with 11.30 remaining in the third period, Toronto 3, Flyers 3. Tiger Williams and Bridgman going to go off unless they pull it as they've been doing the the jungle circle around one another. Now Bell skates off, cooler head. Terry, all right, let's assume that's here. Now, he makes the puck, and all John Celeste does is bump him. John Celeste just barely got a piece of it. Not even considered a good check if you're going to check school, Gene. And referee Dave Newell is, is, like I said, out for lunch on that call when you start calling like that. Even Thomas had the puck on his stick when Bird made connection with him. And for the call charging on a bump like that, these fans are giving uh, Bob Kelly a royal round of booze as he came out to see if Tiger Williams wanted to dance with him for a while rather than Mel Bridgman. Freddie Shiro behind the bench right now looking his charges over deciding what he's going to go with with. Well you know Zaleski had made threatening overtures to Thomas on that last stoppage when Kimberchuk was hurt and then comes down and takes a run at him when he has the puck and I wonder if Newell a uh, free red he's going to try to cheap shot him and call the penalty on the uh, observation free reading is one thing if he pre-read that one, if he'd watch the actual contact, it's a bad call on referee Dave Newell. Sorry. Captain Bobby Clark, we're talking with Newell right now, but you know he's going to get no satisfaction at all. Well, um, we're going to measure McDonald's stick, and he threw it at Dave Newell. And I would think that... Uh, if Dave McDonald's Newell has any kind of gumption whatsoever when a player throws a stick at you like that. Oh, I think he did, didn't he, or what? No, he just lifted it. He meant to lift the glass. But I realize that McDonald's uh, was angry, but uh, it's a sign of contempt to throw your stick at the official. And now they're measuring the... Uh, let's see, is it all right? It is all right. Well, the fines are now $200 each. I'll tell you one thing. When a referee lets a player do that to him in plain sight and as obvious as that, you got to know that you've lost a little bit of face. Well, I wonder if Mr. Noel feels he has. Losing face doesn't help us on the penalty department either, so we're still two minutes short. First, Kolesky in the penalty box for charging. Face off outside the Toronto line, as Sittler and Clark draw. McDonald gets it back to Salming on the far side. Comes their side for Dave Tiger Williams. Bump by Lonsbury. Lifts at the length of the ice. Jim Watson goes for it. He's double teamed as the Leafs are sending two men in deep. Watson quickly up to Clark. He can't clear out. A minute 42 left on Celeste's penalty. Daly on the right wing side. Off the glove of Turnbull to center ice. Here comes Lonsbury with Clark breaking. Lonsbury's drive wide to the short side. Picked up by McDonald on the right wing. The Leafs score him up ice. Across the Flyers line. McDonald's drive is wide as he went to the low far corner. Turnbull at the left wing got the drive, but it's blocked off. Term and Daly now against Selming. One on one. Takes the drive. Long side turns out of play as he didn't see Jim Watson wide open breaking down the left side. All he had to do was go back in the second gear and draw Salming over to allow Watson to catch up, drop it to the left wing, and bingo. But it's easier up here. I was going to say. Now, Dave Newell is telling Tiger Williams to cool it. I think Dave Newell is closing his patience. 10.47 remaining third period. As the Flyers now lead 22-19 in shots, and in this period, 5-2. All right, now we still have more confrontation, Williams and Bob Kelly. And now we got a misconduct against Kelly and Williams. They're gone. I think Dave Newell rightly so this time, Terry, to stop all the nonsense. Well, if I got to agree with you, I guess I will cheat on a referee and end of it all right. But he sent both... Dave Williams, now Dave Williams is reaching over with his stick, trying to reach at one of the players. And Dave Newell, once again, standing right there, looking at it, doing nothing about it whatsoever. So 
I think maybe if he loses any more face, he'll have to wear a mask pretty soon. Now what? Now you see, the Flyers, we don't want any ugliness here, I hope, sir. We've got no, it's a matter of Dave them. Williams down there in the penalty box, sort of waving his stick, maybe making overtures towards Don Celeste and Bob Kelly were in. The timekeepers and the uh, the clock keepers in there that separate them. There's no way any damage can be done. We'll catch the penalties here. Bob Kelly, 10-minute misconduct. Dave Williams, a 10-minute misconduct. All right, for the Hound, it gives him 16 penalty minutes on the playoff. And for Williams, 29. Time of the penalty. So if there's overtime, they'll get back in. But otherwise not. We'll have to have, uh, no, I'm sorry. They'll be back at 1913 uh, of this period. I'm sorry, Dave and Bob. And there's still a minute and 17 remaining in Big Bird Seleski's penalty, so we'll still be short for that amount of time. Killing that one off. Seleski continues to glare to his left where Dave Williams is seated. I think if you could see Don Seleski's face, you'd see a little bit of a smirk on it. He's sort of tantalizing. Dave Williams down in there, trying to maybe draw him into something more stupid than he already has. Bobby Clark goes to the oh, Flyers. What we got here? But uh, Dave Newell says no, no more changes, so Clark comes back on. All right, now they've got Dave Newell testy, Terry, and I think you have to cool it now. You right, can only push your luck so far with the referee, Gene, you're right. Okay, face off to the right of Thomas. Clark against Sittler. Flyers and Leafs tied 3-3. This is game six of the quarterfinal round. Flyers need one more to nail this series down. Leafs control. Salming starts out slowly against the fourth checking of Clark. Goes to Thompson on the right wing. Pass broken up at the Flyers line. Clark has it. Goes left side for Jim Watson. Tried to go ahead for Lonsbury, but it rides the length of the ice in on Thomas to take off any icing possibility. McKinney sets up behind his own net. He leads Salming on the right side, and Salming chooses to go. He's slowed down and almost straightened right up by a DuPont thump. Puck cleared over the stick of McKinney along the left point side, and is back at the Toronto line. McKinney with it. Goes behind Sittler, taken off the Toronto left wing boards by Thompson. He goes back to the near side, and no one's there. And McKinney has to retrieve it. And, of course, this is making the Toronto skaters cover that much more ground. DuPont and McDonald spins by DuPont coming in off the right and settles it for the goal mouth and McDonald is down and he's hurt. Tommy Bladen caught Lanny McDonald cutting in off that out of the corner with the puck. Tommy was coming back from the cross ice. He hit him with a solid check that put Lanny McDonald down and you know when you're putting Lanny McDonald down you've hit him a good jolt and, and that's exactly what Tommy Bladen did. Lanny McDonald had his head down taking a shot on Wayne Stevenson. Just as he dropped his head, Tommy Bladen cut across ice and corked him a dandy. Boy, you just can't let a guy like that go, and you've got to get make sure you get the full check. Here he comes. Here he cuts him. Now he'll make his shot on Wayne Stevenson. As he makes it, he drops his head just that smidgen, and there is Tommy Bladen to give him a good joke. On that one, we'll maybe take a little bit of a call. He close lined him a little bit, but referee Dave Newell decides that it's more legal than not so how can you close line someone a little bit <laughs> well mcdonald went over and i don't think he said anything to know but he did a couple of twirls with his stick as if to say why not settler sounding mcdonald seven points of course uh, they're going to kill you if you let them go and the flyers didn't on tuesday and they have tonight and they're stalemated at three at 9 44 and again they're going to keep testing dave newell on late line changes and double line changes he's either going to rip somebody with a misconduct or a delay of the game penalty, again to take charge. Ron Finn set to drop the puck outside the Flyers line. Clark against Bruce Boudreau. The draw goes between Salming and Turnbull, far side of the ice. Salming will be there first. Carries right in front of Wayne Thomas and goes back the other side for Warner. Ahead to Evans. He's banged down hard by DuPont. Puck is beneath. Boudreau across the way, and it's tied up for faceoff inside the Flyers line. Now Dave Newell has lost a little bit of poise because as Clark was checking sounding and his stick was in the uh, horizontal position about waist high, Newell just slapped at it as if to say, get the stick down. Big D Moose DuPont on that play was taking no chances. Uh, Lanny McDonald got away on him in that last break at the blue line to, to come in when Tommy Bladen got him. So that time, 
Moose is hitting any white and blue uniform and say what throw they're just piling them up. On the faceoff, Flyers control in their own zone. DuPont left goes to Bladen on the right to center ice for Barber. He's tied up by Warner, and the loose puck is picked up by Salming, who swings back out of his own zone on the left wing. Goes to Bob Warner, broken up by McLeish, but picked up once more by Salming. Flyers are back at the even strength with Toronto now as Selesky's penalty is over. Here comes Turnbull across the line. On the left wing, goes outside of Bladen, centering pass, back at the line. Salming shot, first wide of Stevenson, taken by Barber. He'll start out on the left side. Quickly up the door now for to McLeish on a tap pass. McLeish inside the line. His shot deflected high into the far corner and out of play. Took the stick right out of somebody's hand, Dornhoffer's, and they'll have a face-off to this top circle, left wing offense. Bob Warner skating off. Again, uh, Brett Kelly's gambling now with the young people, and maybe on, on hindsight, he should have done it earlier in the series. <laughs> well, hopefully we, they'll get burnt using their inexperienced players if we can get one. Good play by Ricky McLeish on that to get it over the boards out of play. He wasn't too sure what was behind him. There was a lot of Leaf players checking him, so he did the smart play and just kept the puck going straight ahead. Grinder truck on the faceoff. Gets the shot off. Wide short side on Thomas's right side, the stick side. Now puck goes into the right wing corner. Selesky battles for it. Bridgman takes it off the board. Tries the short side stuffer, but it's deflected out to Boutet to centerize for Ashby. He breaks with Neely. Neely across the line. Poked away by Bob Daly. Picked up by Bridgman. Down the right wing. Gets by Pellick. Pellick takes him down. And Selesky tries to dig it loose and does. Back to Daly. Tees it up and drives. And hits Pellick and carries him to the far wing. And Pellick is floating it up, but it's Neely now. Across the Flyers line on the right side. Cuts in. Rolls it in on Stevenson as Neely is level. And Daly starts out. Daly puts it right on Boutet's stick, who dumps it right back in. Offside pass against Toronto. 8.06 to go in regulation time. The score is the Flyers 3 and Toronto 3. The Leafs' forgotten man, Inger Hammerstrom, and Mike Pellick, just off to his left, is walking in pain behind the Leaf bench after taking that shot from Daly. Okay, here's Barber teeing it up. His drive is wide. Karen's back to the right point. Bladen. Bladen. Throw a screen. Tap to the backboard. Way off the mark. Dorn Hopper goes for it across the way. Backhands it behind the net for McLeish. Tries to throw it out front. Blocked off by George Ferguson. Ferguson gets loose. And he'll start out on the right way. Ferguson lifts it high in the air to center right. Knocked down by DuPont. Immediately picked up by McKinney. McKinney across the line on the left. Trying to cut through the defense in the left face off circle, but he's broken up and back comes DuPont. DuPont, the right wing, through center ice, goes left side for McLeish. McLeish has Dornhopper open. Dornhopper misses the far corner. Now it's McLeish with a loose puck on the far wing. Keeps it in the zone. Goes right point for Bladen through a screen. Plus save as Dornhopper again is double teamed and taken down by both Salming and Turnbull. Oh dear, oh dear, there it was, Terry. Now Dornhopper and Turnbull are separated by Neil Armstrong and players drifting in from both benches make for a greater number of combatants out there to the left of Wayne Thomas. Dorney but, taking exception to the way that Turnbull took him out in front of that net and spun him around. Good shot by Tommy Bleeding. Just a narrow miss by that last rush down. We just missed a wide open corner on that last one to the stick side of Thomas or we'd have been ahead in this game. Dornhopper hasn't had a point. Uh, couldn't get the puck off the skates as he was moving in with 7.14 remaining. In regulation play, tied at three. Turnbull, the Leafs lead. Clark tied it. McDonald gave them the lead. Daly tied it. McDonald gave them the lead again, and McLeish tied it. Face off to the left of Thomas. Clark against Sittler. On the face off, Clark tries to go back to Leach, but it's picked off by Neely. Neely, his pass on the right wing side, intended for McDonald, picked off by Lonfrey. Clark tried to hit Leach, breaking uh, at the blue line. Let's puck across the way. Clark gets it again. Clark. Looks for Leaf, but goes for Lonfrey down the right wing inside the Toronto zone. Goes to the right wing corner behind the net. Blocked off by Pellick. Clark out to Jim Watson. His shot blocked by Settler. And here come the Leaf. Neely. Wing to wing for McDonald. Across the line. Shot is blocked off by Joe Watson. Picked up by Clark. Quickly around the near side. Leaf can't get out of the zone. Pellick blocks him. Neely blocks Clark. Puck behind the net. McDonald tries the short side stuffer. Blocked by Jim Watson. And it's behind the Flyers net. Clark goes down. Jim Watson still battles. Clark can't get out of the net. And finally, it comes to Leach near side. Reverses direction for Joe Watson. He'll move it to center ice on the left wing. 
Watson caddy corners it to the Toronto right wing corner. Loose puck picked up now by Pellick as the Flyers change on the go. Settler parted from the puck. Here comes Dupont across the line on the right. Here it is. Moving in. Has no shot. Goes to the left wing corner. Shovels it across for Bob Daly. The count's going to tee it up. Drive. Down oh. by Kinderchuk. Laid in on Thomas. And he makes the save and ties it up. We've got 5.50 left in regulation time with the score. Toronto 3 and the Flyers 3. Melbridge been looking on with the score tied at three face off in the leaf goal to the left. Kendrachuk against Boudreau. Kendrachuk got a stick on it, but it uh, pops right to Turnbull and he sets up behind the Leafs net. Tried to spring Boudreau loose, but the pass is way off the mark. Flyers get it back. Kendrachuk lifts it to the left wing corner. Goes behind the Leafs net. Picked up there by Borea Salmi. 5.36 left in regulation time as Turnbull takes the feed on the left. Quickly out to center ice. Onside as Boudreau gets across the Flyers line. Double teamed and dumped. Puck back at center ice as Bridgman scooped it up for Seleski. Seleski to Kindrachuk. Breaking it off the left. Puck is beneath. One man picked up by Paul Evans. He breaks with Boudreau and Warner. Left wing pass intended for Warner. He's bumped by Daly and buried at the Flyers backboard. Loose puck behind the net. Comes to the near wing. Evans battles Seleski for it. Daly blocks it off, and it's tied up for face off to the right of Wayne Stevenson. Kids are green, but they're showing a lot of moxie in a very tough situation. When you throw them like that, Gene, you've got to have them going. They've got the young pins, the good legs, and that's what you want of them, is just to keep tiring out the other team. And this young group right here is certainly doing that. Both teams now going to the boards a lot, taking no chance of any loose pucks. Here. When the puck is in each end, they're freezing it. They're not letting anything squirt out there at all, so a fluke goal will hurt them. And with Freddie's theory down in the far end to try and keep it loose, hopefully, and there's a, penny, a view of us away up Hockey Night in Canada at the gondola. Okay, faceoff comes out to center ice. Mike Pellick waits for his teammates to clear and dumps it back into the Flyers' left wing corner. Under five minutes left. Blade gives the puck off to Jim Watson, lines it up for Barber, gets by him, and it'll be Randy Carlisle tracking it down just inside the Toronto line. Hits Errol Thompson with a pass, wasn't expecting it. Puck bounces high in the air and out of play in the Toronto right wing corner. I don't know what I'm going to do by saying this, but the Flyers have won four games here in playoff history, and three of them have come in overtime. <laughs> I'm touching wood while you're saying it, Gene, so a view of Coach Red Kelly behind the Leafs, and the clock shows 4.37 remaining in the third period, a 3-3 tie. McLeish against Ferguson, top of the near circle right. This is to the left of Wayne Thomas. Puck controlled by the Flyers. Back to Bladen at the right point. Lines up and drives. Glove save, it was off the mark. Thomas drops it off for Carlisle. Up to Thompson, near side. Intercepted by McLeish. Rolls it through. McLeish gets it right back again in the right wing corner to Dornhofer. Dornhofer, they're climbing all over him. And now it's Carlisle. Carlisle slowed down by McLeish, but the pass is already on its way as Ferguson goes to Thompson. He can't handle it. Picked up by McLeish. He's across the Toronto line. Goes to the right wing corner. Tries to throw it in front. Hits the side of the net. Thompson around the far wing for McKinney. Blocked out by Jim Watson. Kicked up to Ferguson. Lifted to center ice. Comes to the near wing. Bladen will be there. Bladen hits the red line and lifts it back into the Toronto left wing corner. Lanny McDonald back on. Takes it and sets it up behind his own net. Quickly up to Sittler. Gets by him the length of the ice. But icing is waved off. Now quickly Joe Watson to Bob Daly. Almost intercepted by Sittler. Joe Watson can't clear it out as the Leafs start to apply a bit of pressure. Intercepted by Selmy to Sittler all along the right wing across the way. Sittler back to Selmy. The drive wide of Stevenson. Comes to the Flyers left wing. A drive by Turnbull is into the side of the net. Kept in by Selmy at the right point. Goes to the Flyers backboard. Joe Watson around the near side. Turnbull at the left point. Down on the left wing corner for Neely. His pass knocked out of the slot. Neely gets his stick on it. A drive by Settler goes out of play across the way and will be faced off inside the Flyers zone. Flyers had uh, four opportunities to clear from the corner, could not, and the Leafs put sounding doing most of the pressing on the far boards, kept it in, and that time off a blocked pass that rolled right in the slot. Settler just made a pivot on Grove, and it's the kind of play where a goaltender is either there or not there if it's on the net. He's have no chance to make a move, but it was deflected out of the ring. 
Face off to Stevenson's right with 3.01 remaining in regulation. Game tied at three. It's been that way since 7.37 on McLeish's power play goal. Lana McDonald taking the face off as Sittler is poised in the inner edge of the face off circle to the right of Stevenson as he checks out. Clark against McDonald. Flyers uh, can't control. Clark still battles for it. Now it's Leach. Leach fans as he tries to clear now gets it out. Picked up by Lanfrey. Goes outside of Salming. Drops it back for Jim Watson. Fires kicked out by Thomas. The rebound picked up by Salming. It'll be kept in by Clark. Clark goes to the right wing corner. Lanfrey goes for it. Back to Daly, the drive. Push pop. The Flyers go in front. Four to three at 17-22 of the third period of play. Jimmy Watson has just picked up his first point of the playoffs and his fourth all-time goal and of all positions to be and he broke in as they covered him from the point. Thomas couldn't get the rebound away while he was on his side and there is the count daily making it count again. It went right through Turnbull skates. Thomas off balance tried to hook the puck away but Jimmy Watson as he went down scored at 17-22 and for the first time tonight the Flyers lead it. Jim Watson as Daly shot went through not Turnbull but Sittler Gets the goal from Turnbull, from uh, Ross Lonsbury and Bob Daly. Daly has now had a goal and two assists on the four flyer goals. So the Leafs now are two minutes, 38 seconds away from elimination. Hang tough, Don Earl. Well, I just hope you don't have to put on those track shoes and do the 100 again. Face off at center ice. Kindrichuk lifts it into the Toronto zone. Thomas sets it up for Mike Pellick. Flyers lead it for the first time in the game. 4-3, the go-ahead goal off of the stick of Jim Watson. Carlisle up the right wing at center. He's broken up uh, by Kindrichuk. Loose puck uh, finally lifted into the fly zone. Shallow as Tom Bladen moves it back to center right. Seleski on the right wing now. Drives it to the Toronto left wing corner. Carlisle on it. for checking. <coughs> excuse me, as Bridgman. Quickly out comes Boudreau as he takes the lead pass. He's across the Flyers line, poked off his stick by Blade, but now picked up by Evans. Evans, left wing corner, throws it in front. Back to by Boudreaux, it's blocked by Stevenson, and here comes Zaleski. Great bit by Bruce Boudreaux. Boudreaux, back inside the Flyers now, taken down by Blade. The fans here at Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens are calling for a penalty. Now it's Bridgman on the left wing, just lifts it to center right. Right on the stick of uh, Mike Pellick. Pellick. From the red line, down the left wing boys. Stevenson sets it up behind the net for DuPont. Quickly up to uh, Seleski. He can't move out. Finally cleared up to McLeish on the right wing. Goes left side for Barber. Barber gets the puck inside the zone. Has it taken away by McKinney. McKinney spins away from McLeish. Goes left side for Pellick. 1-10 left in regulation time. Pellick lifts it wide of Stevenson. who comes out to glove it. Jim Watson can't clear up, but now it's picked up by Barber. Barber to McLeish, to Dornhopper. Dornhopper across the line, down the slot. Back to McLeish, blocked off. Dornhopper on the ice, gets a stick on it. 50 seconds left. Here's Errol Thompson, ahead for Turnbull. He's to center ice, up to Ferguson. Dumps it in on Stevenson wide, and he covers it to stop play with 39 seconds left in regulation time. That's the length of time remaining between the Leafs and the Flyers, with the Flyers holding the one goal lead, the go-ahead goal by Jim Watson at 7.22 of this third period of play. A reminder that if the Flyers play Sunday night, whether it be against Toronto or against whomever, it will not be a 7 o'clock game. It will be 8 o'clock, and it will be seen locally on TV 29 and heard on CAU Radio. Face-off, when play resumes, will be to the right of Wayne Stevenson. Fires have out there Clark, Kimberchuk, Lonfrey, defensive specialist with DuPont and Daly. The late show with Ferguson. Sittler, McDonald, Neely, Salming, and Turnbull. Turnbull shot deflected high over the glass and in the mezzanine behind the Flyers net to our left. So we'll try it once more. This time it'll be the top of the near circle to our left. 
The Leafs just 36 seconds away from elimination in this quarterfinal round, a series that's been a humdinger. Ferguson against Clark on the faceoff. Comes to Kinderchuk, skates it behind the net. He's double teamed, gonna tie it up there, take no chances, he's broken up. Rolls it in front, but Clark clears it away on the right side for line three. He's at center ice, broken up there, and McDonald makes a bid for it. Ferguson straightened up by Daly. DuPont has it, 16 seconds left. Kept in by Stalming, it hops over his stick. Here's Lonsbury, one on one, wide open net. Thomas has been pulled, Kendra Chuck misses the open net. Caroms to Clark in the left wing corner, off the goal post. And now it's Kendra Chuck off the right wing, one second, it's all over. It's all over. The Flyers have won the game four to three. And that's eliminated Toronto from this quarterfinal round. Now Dave Tiger Williams is making overtures about going after some of the Flyers, which uh, I think is an exhibition of the poorest type of sportsmanship. And he's got, he's grabbed by Daryl Sittler. Williams now is going to the dressing room. He refuses to shake hands with any of the Flyers. Williams showing poor sportsmanship as he streaked to the Leafs dressing room, refusing to shake hands. Of course, this is traditional at the uh, conclusion of any series in Stanley Cup play and international play. Daryl Sittler, Gary Dorenhofer, Rick McLeese, Red Kelly is in line. And the handshake ceremony, which goes back to the beginning of Stanley Cup play, goes on down below us. And I'll tell you, this Toronto team has shown what playoff hockey is all about as they hung tough and forced the Flyers to almost the very limit. They stretched them to seven games a year ago, and they made overtures to do the same thing again this season. And so it'll be the Flyers going against the... Boston, if they win that series, and they'll try to nail that series down on the West Coast tonight. But if L.A. wins, well, we'll just have to sit and wait on that one. And uh, that pretty much does it as far as the ceremony at center ice. The final score, the Flyers win it 4-3. to three, And uh, we'll be back for tonight's recap in just a moment. Here in Station. Toronto, and the Flyers saved their best shooting onslaught for that final period picking up two goals, enough to overtake the Toronto Maple Leafs and win this deciding game. The final score was 4-3. to three. McDonald on a power play goal gave them a 3-2 lead at the 5.06 mark, but back came Rick McLeish with a power play goal of his own at 7.37, and the game winner at 17.22 off the stick of Jim Watson. The Flyers had 30 shots on goal, the Leafs 24, and now the Leafs are eliminated. The Flyers play a waiting game for the outcome of the Boston L.A. series. Final score, Flyers four, the Leafs three. Stay tuned for the postgame show, which follows next. The excitement continues on the Finance America postgame show. A complete wrap-up of all the Flyers' action sponsored by Finance America, a Bank America company. Here are the highlights of the game. The goals, the penalties, the big plays, and a live interview with the Flyers' star of the game. It's all brought to you by Finance America, the company to see when you need a loan. Because Finance America wants to put a jingle in your pocket. The game, 4-3. Coach Mike Necklock with me, and if it looks like we're sitting on the edge of our seats, we are, because after a series like this, Mike, we have every right to be able to do it. To sit here and go through a quiet interview is going to be a little tough. Mike, you and I are talking numbers. We said 38 seconds, one game. Four minutes, roughly, the next game. Tonight, two minutes and 24 seconds. Mike, you can sum up this series for us against the Leafs and how our team played. Well, to come back, like, I think in this building, the way we had to come back, I think we were down goals, and we come back every time, and in, in the closing towards the end of each, the third period there, it takes an awful lot of courage, Terry. I mean, I think the guys really showed you what they're made out of, uh, to come back and, and to do what they've, they've done in uh, the Maple Leaf Gardens here. Uh, uh, we were talking uh, about what key plays were that uh, throughout the series and that. I thought that... Uh, 
one of the key plays was when uh, Freddie uh, moved Ross Lonsbury uh, to check Lanny McDonald. I know people are going to say, well, you know, Lanny McDonald got a lot of goals, and uh, but uh, most of his goals were on power play goals, you know, so uh, you can't really count that. I thought really that was one of the key plays, and uh, I think uh, the other key play, I thought that uh, when Freddie... Uh, he, he started to go with uh, the five defensemen. He gave uh, Ricky, who has inexperience, uh, uh, not as much ice time, but uh, you know he'll he'll play him. And uh, but when things get a little tough, then he'll he'll go with the five that he uh, regulars. Uh, Terry, Mike, we were talking earlier before we went on the air. All this series, we had a week before we come into it. You as a coach, I know as a player, what we'd like to do in that week and what, what goes through our mind. Maybe you can tell the people at home and some of the people out there that. How do you keep a team keen? How do you keep the fellas on edge? You got a whole week to kill. You got to come up with something to keep those fellas in shape, but at the same time happy. Well, I think the the first thing you think of automatically, Terry, is it's a long season, and you do have like what was it? We had about eight days or so off, so we gave the boys a couple of days off just to relax and uh, you know be with their families. Uh, we thought that would be good because you know it's it's tough. It's a tough life in that traveling like this here, and. Uh, so uh, then we started to get them back, and then we started to go into the scrimmaging bit with it. But uh, sometimes it doesn't really work that much because you know you get into scrimmaging and the guys want to the guys want to take it easy, and they, you know <laughs> we're getting a wrap up. You don't lose that uh, you lose that edge. I think that you had uh, eight days is really too long, Terry. It's not bad four days you can get back into it, but eight days is really too long. Okay, we got. Gene Hart making a wrap-up sign. Moose Dupont trying to do it in English, which is having difficulty. <laughs> Mike, we're waiting right now for the outcome out in the West Coast. L.A. and Boston. How do you get set for a series? What team, how do you get ready to see what team you're going to go against? Well, you know, I think just, we're just glad to get by this series. It was a tough series, believe me. Toronto almost had us, and I think all the guys are just happy that we come back the way we did and we won and we're in the next series and from there we'll take it. Doesn't matter who we play. Mike, as you said, very happy to put on to the next series, bring them on to us. We'll go at this commercial now, and then Gene Hart will be back with his two guests, Mr. Andre Dupont and Mr. Billy Barber. <laughs> See, that guy always tell me I couldn't speak French. Boy, are you stuck with an answer now? I ask him all the thing about the game tonight. He's got no answer for us. Uh, all right, ready? Fly or cat? Toronto, <laughs> toi. Fini. Oui, monsieur. So, tout fini. So, that thing. Moose, <laughs> come on, no, be, be, hey, you, no, we're going to be a little serious now. I don't think of any, anybody in the, in the league that can have more respect for the effort of the Toronto Maple Leafs than the Flyers, and particularly you two guys. Well, Gene, you know, uh, first two games, uh, we, we were in trouble. We have to admit that. We didn't play well, and we lost. And, you know, we have a great hockey team, and uh, there's no way our team's going to give up. And I think Toronto knew that even though we were down two games and nothing, we came back four in a row. That's our hockey team, and we're ready to go on to the next series. The Flyers did the impossible. They win a series in six games with no points from Andre Dupont. Well, it's not as impossible. Like, we got uh, 19 other guys on the team, and they got the points for me. And I, I did my job by trying to stop them, and I'm just as happy they didn't get any goals against me. And it's, uh, it's just as uh, important for me right now. Great defenseman, Borja Salming. Oh, definitely. Uh, you have to rate him as one of the best, if not the best right now. I have to admire the individual. You know, we tried to tire him out, and he kept on playing. He kept on coming. and. Fortunately enough, uh, Fred used our bench very well, and I think it paid off for a hockey team. We went, you know, three lines, two forwards, six defensemen, and I'll tell you, uh, to win a Stanley Cup, you have to have everybody going, and uh, we did it the last four games. And at the other end, a marvelous pair of offensive players, Sittler and McDonald. Yeah, very, very, especially McDonald. We gotta, you know, you have to keep close to him all the time because every time he come wide, he's got the quick wrist shot, and it's very hard because he used the defenseman as a screen, you know, for the goaltender and. That's the way he scored a couple goals tonight, and uh, he's pretty tough to check. And uh, Settler never quit. He's kind of a Clarky type. He works hard and all the time, and uh, they would really work hard. They really surprised me this year, a lot more than last year. No backup goaltending for Wayne Stevenson. Well, Wayne played very well. Uh, you know, uh, you got to have the goaltending, and he, he came up very big for us, and it's important uh, for us to win. We got to have goaltending and uh, everybody going. And fortunate enough, we did it the last four games, and. We go on to the next series looking forward to it. It's, we got our work cut out for us, and uh, I think if everybody can do what they're capable of, we shouldn't have any trouble. All right, gentlemen, both of you, lean over. Would you just as soon get going Sunday against somebody, or would you rather have the rest till Tuesday? I would rather uh, soon as soon uh, go as soon as we can. Uh, we had the rest for a while there, and it didn't, show, didn't help us too much in the series, and uh, I think we got the, the momentum to go now, and uh, we got our mind to playing hockey, and just want to start as soon as we can. I feel the same way as uh, Moose does, and I imagine everybody else in the team does too. That, you know, we have to. Uh, as soon as it just starts Sunday, we're we're all ready to roar. Now uh, we had the week off and didn't, like Moose said, it didn't help us too much. So we're ready to get out of it right now. 
All right, gentlemen, for being our guests, you're going to be thrilled by this again in the hot weather. Abbas Dairies from the ice cream capital of the world provide for you a year's supply of the greatest ice cream in the world. That's a half a gallon every weekend for the great DuPont.